Over the course of more than 3,000 days in Minecraft survival, I've transformed my world into a steampunk metropolis, going on adventures, building crazy farms and creating epic builds. I did this in eight episodes that I've now stitched together into this helpful almost three hour video, which is great to put on while studying, something to watch whilst you're going to bed or just to chill out to. Whether you want to relive the journey or it's your first time here, sit back and enjoy the adventure. I'm starting a brand new survival world, taking advantage of all of the new features in the Caves and Cliffs and Wild updates. I want to build a long term world filled with epic builds and immersive areas, so join me on the all new 80s adventure. It spawned me in a tree, but that gave me a different angle to punch my first wood. The plan, as with any new world, was crafting some tools, getting some resources and making a bed to survive the first night. So episode one, I need to find a suitable area, take over a village, get a bunch of resources and build the, the most, most epic, epic survival, survival starter, starter base ever, ever constructed. constructed. So no pressure then. First, I need to get some food for the journey and then as many different sapling types as possible. Luckily, there were lots of both around spawn. That really is an impressive piece of land. I don't know what is going on here, but yeah, it looks pretty cool. So that was a bit of a mistake, but we survived. That's all that matters. YOLO. It was also here that I first encountered the green menace that plagues every Minecraft world. I filmed this first episode in 1.18, but plan on updating to 1.19 as soon as I can. With some of the basic resources filling my pockets, I headed out in search of somewhere to set up my first area. For this, I needed to find a mesa. I also very much wished at this point that chess boats were already in the game. As you can see by those roofs, we found ourselves a village and it's a savannah one. I do like savannah bit villages, to be honest. Uh, so if we head round this way, go in between these islands, we should be able to get there. As we head over, we can check out what's in this village and try not to fall in any big holes. As with most villages, the loot was pretty terrible, not a golden apple in sight. So this isn't the biggest village, but we do have a few of these guys here. So what I'm going to do is try and capture these because we are going to be using these to breed up. So I think this little yellow house is going to be our temporary base of operations whilst we get some things set up. And what I'm going to do is just get some chests made, dump off some of my stuff and start building just a very, very temporary villager breeder. I've set up here a base of operations, so I've got everything that I need. What I need to do now is collect all of the beds, put them all in a hole and start making them some food so I can start breeding them. Just over the hill, I collected a bunch of sand to make some glass and also discovered the mesa area I'd been wanting. Perfect. Whilst all of that glass is smelting and the other bits and pieces, I am going to set up a sugarcane farm. Great. I've now finished putting together a little farming area. So what we've got is alternating melons and pumpkins coming in here. We've got ourselves some carrots in here, wheat, of course, in here and potatoes just down here. And then some extra blocks. We've got ourselves cocoa beans growing up there. We've got the bamboo. We've got the cactus and the sugar cane has been growing all of that time. So that's almost ready for harvest. Alongside that, I collected some of the sheep that were just randomly roaming around this area and I've put them in here. So those are ready to breed up. And here I've set up my little cow farm that I'm going to have. And a nice gentleman dropped by and uh, yeah, he left us some leads. I don't know what happened there, but yeah, we've got some leads now. Going to go and get myself from over this way some cows now, bring them back and then start harvesting up some of this stuff. So I have some cows and these aren't too far away at all. There we are, the cows are now back as well. I lost a lead on the way, but uh, I reckon the guy who drops leads will be back relatively soon. But now I can do this for the first time and get myself a decent source of food and leather. In terms of the farming, everything seems to be set up. The crops are growing nicely. And the next thing to do will be to head down into this area down here, which at the moment is very, very unsafe. I need to get myself some iron because I literally have four. I scoured some caves for iron and that's a bit better. I've now got 40 bits of iron that I can smelt up and also almost a stack of copper as well. Everything's smelting up nicely now and I'll be able to make myself some armor. I do have a texture pack that I'm going to be using that actually makes the armor and in the future a light true invisible just so you can see my beautiful, beautiful skin much better. 
Whilst doing some more lighting up of the caves under the base, I discovered my first spawner. Sadly, it was a spider one, but it did contain some decent loot. I trapped a couple of villagers to get myself some early trades and managed to get Feather Falling Fall and Fortune, which will make a huge difference making my branch mine. On my way down to the mines, I learned a valuable lesson about not having your mob sounds turned off whilst you're exploring. Shortly after this though, I managed to get my first diamonds. Off this high, I put together a villager breeder based on an Impulse SV design. And then whilst they pooped out some babies, I headed back down to the mines to find some more diamonds. Lots of diamonds. A little bit of crafting later. Ah, oh, I feel so much better now. I've been doing a little bit of trading and started a temporary farm for some wood that I'm going to be needing. And I've put together a enchanting setup here. So I am going to build up some levels, maybe do some mining. But most importantly, I have enough of these villagers now to do the next task, which is to flatten out some ground over here and build up an iron farm. Because, yeah, the iron will help with then villager trades. And I've also managed to get something that's really really useful rather than needing to actually go to the nether to get potions of weakness if we come over here to this guy here we will see that his final trade is a arrow of weakness so what we can do is just get a regular bow shoot the villagers and then use apples to convert them back from the zombie villagers so we can get some really really good trades before we've even gone to the nether so that's going to be a great great thing now it's time to build the iron farm I'm using a design based on Logical Geek Boys one from his Simply Minecraft series, which is an absolutely fantastic watch, and I'll link it below. I adjusted the spawning and collection systems to make sure the golems all go to the same place to be killed. With this iron farm, I'll have a solid supply of iron blocks. So I'm really pleased with this. And as you can see, the golems spawn and then just get flushed down through the lava here. I get my iron and also a supply of poppies which I can then turn into some bone meal on this side N not too much bone meal yet but as time goes on I'll be able to get that all filled up so both of those are going to be really really useful for me now I need to sort out getting the villagers fed so we can get some more of them and start building myself some more little pods for some villager trading my coal resources are running low so I head out to restock Whilst I'm out, I find a beehive, which is great because I'm going to need a lot of copper and therefore I'm going to need a honey farm. Spotting the second beehive, I set about collecting both of these to bring back to the village. Having put some villagers in their new pods, I went AFK overnight and I got myself plenty of iron as that continues to work away. So we've got more than a double chest's worth now. So that's going to last us for a long, long time as it's about to go and get dark again. The other benefit of going AFK is that without needing to work too hard this guy here and a couple of these guys also got zombified so i can convert them back and i can actually get some cheaper trades for those which is going to be great whilst these guys are converting back i am going to finish off my honey farm I've now got a really, really simple bee farm. So I've managed to shear these up. There's some bees currently chilling out inside these and we'll be breeding these up as time goes on. And once I've bred them up and they're full, I'm going to automate this whole thing by adding some redstone behind. So I've left a bit of space here. But now I need to get some more villagers out of here, fill up my villager trading area and then start getting some OP gear. I think it's time to go to the nether for some quartz and some levels. The downside for this is needing to mine some obsidian. Oh, I've got my gold helmet. Now let's light this thing and see where I end up. Okay, I've got another waste. It could definitely be worse. And would you look at that? My luck is in. There's another fortress right there. I suppose with it this close, it would be rude to not look around it. It's always good to get hold of blaze rods and nether wart early in the game. With this looted, it was time to bring the spoils home. Now that I'm back, my bees have all grown up and I've finished the automation of my honey farm. This is a really simple but effective design by Gecko, which will be linked in the description. You can use either shears or honey bottles and I've got mainly shears as I'm going to need to wax a lot of copper. Following a really successful AFK session, not only have I managed to get myself a new jelly cat who was just hanging about around here, but I also now have a bunch more iron and loads of honeycomb and honey bottles so I can start aging and waxing some copper. I've also set out some simple tree farms, but there's one wood that I'm still missing and that's spruce. So it's time for a little adventure. 
I've done some preparation and got myself a couple of ender chests. I've also brewed up some useful potions because of this guy here who, thanks to zombification, will trade me ender pearls and glowstone all for the low, low price of one emerald. And so I can convert these guys whenever I want, I've also captured a zombie who happily is chilling here with his rotten flesh, ready to be wheeled out whenever I need him. Off I set across the ocean to get away from these warm biomes. And before too long, I found this tiger biome. So now to get myself a bit of spruce wood, but most importantly, I want to get a bunch of saplings to complete my wood collection. Well, until I get mangrove trees and I need azalea too, but still progress. On my way back, I found myself an ocean monument and been given mining fatigue. Although conquering this will have to be a project for another day. Back at home, the final villager I need for now is in place and he's been zombified and cured. Also, he can sell me golden carrots. I do love steak and it's probably given my choice my favorite food in the game, but it's just so much easier to pop over to this guy and trade to get myself food rather than waiting for the cows to grow up and then having to kill them. And with him in place though, I now need to start the massive, massive task of resource gathering to build my base. I've done some copper mining and I've got a whole bunch of copper that I've already aged and some more that's aging here because for the first build, which is actually going to be over in this direction, I'm going to need quite a lot of copper at different stages, hence why I needed the bee farm to get the honey. I've expanded my villagers to have a couple more things that I didn't have, so I didn't have aqua affinity, I didn't have depth strider and I didn't actually have looting either. So yeah, that's all now up to date and I am going to, whilst these trees grow up a little bit head out and look for some dripstone caves because that's the next thing that I'm going to need is some dripstone and I'm also then going to head down and see if I can locate myself a slime chunk because we are going to need quite a bit of slime as well for decoration not really for any flying machines or anything on my travels I've discovered a village that seems to have some magic water impressive haha -ha! in the distance I can see some dripstone that's what we're looking for now just to get over there and here we are, and there seems to be plenty of the stuff. So I will mine a fair chunk of this up and we can also set up a bit of a farm when we get back. Perfect. So I've located myself a slime chunk and built a really, really simple farm. This is a logical geek boy farm from his Simply Minecraft series. I'll put the details in the description, of course, so that you can do this. But basically you don't need to do anything apart from dig out this area and have one golem. So I'm now just gonna sort this area out by placing in all of the hoppers. And then we're gonna be using some soul campfires feeding into some of these chests. The last of the chests and the last of the hoppers is in place. And now all that's left is to place these campfires. So if we go up here, we can place these along like so. And these, I went specially on a long, long trip to a soul sand valley to get the soul campfires because basically they are much, much quicker to kill the mobs. So yeah, you can the sooner that you can get the mobs out of a farm, the better, because the more mob cap that that frees up. So I'll just clean this up just like so. Here we've got all of the drops that are going to come down here and then we're going to head up and what we have up here when we finally get to the top is the AFK platform which should be in just the right place and I've lit up some of these islands as well and some of the base area which hadn't been lit up before. Now I'm going to AFK for the night and hopefully get myself the slime balls that I need. A few moments later. So after a night of AFKing let's see how our slime farm's done. YOLO. And as we head down here, fingers crossed, we have slime. Ooh, oh, oh, we've got an, a good, good amount of slime. This should be everything that we need. So that is absolutely fantastic. I will take a few of these through and yeah, brilliant. Exactly what we needed. So I got tired of going through my awful, awful chest monster that was over there. And I've given everything a good tidy up and started putting things in chests. I thought I'd be able to fit it all in here, but actually, yeah, it's expanded quite a lot. But because of being around here, I've got loads of resources from the farms, including loads of iron, loads of slime. Just been sorting out the things that I'm going to need because I've also got a plan for what I'm going to be doing just over here in the future, which I'll be showing you about. But before that, 
then I need to go mining for loads more stone. So I've put together a new silk touch pickaxe just in case this runs short and also need loads and loads of copper. So yeah, I've got a fair amount, but I really, really need more. So it's back into the mines now to get as many resources as I can. Well, after taking some time mining up just the andesite that I need and not getting anywhere near the stone, I've decided and realised it's going to be much quicker if I head back to that nether fortress and get myself three wither skulls and, uh, and a beacon. So, yeah, a uh, slight change of plan and that's where I'm off. I spotted another nether fortress just across the lava that straddles the basalt delta and soul sand valley. So in theory, if fewer mobs spawn in soul sand valleys, then the rate should be much better here. Come on, let's see if you're going to drop one. Finally! It does seem like it's been forever that I've been killing these guys, which has been particularly painful as they haven't been fast to spawn at all. But we've got the first one, only two more to go. I gave up on that fortress and headed back to the original one to see if that was any better. There we have skull number two. And finally, here we have it, the third wither skull. So that's taken a fair old while. There's a few wither skeletons that I will clean up and then I'll head back home and prepare for the wither fight. Eventually. So I've done the prep work. I've got myself an absolutely stonking smite sword. Uh, I've got my bow obviously ready to go with an arrow. I've made that mistake before. Uh, and also a whole bunch of potions, including some strength to a swiftness potion, night vision and some fire resistance. Also some honey bottles if I do get withered badly so I can get rid of that. And also they, they are a source of food. So yeah, it's all ready to go. And now the moment of truth before I chuck this head on and then back away and start drinking these potions. So here we go. And that was a surprisingly easy with a fight. I mean, now that we've got deep slate and they don't spread out from the explosion so much, to be honest, they're all pretty easy these days. So you don't even need to uh, to kill them underneath the end portal just to actually speed things up. So I know it's overkill to prepare, but you never know what's going to happen. So I now have my wither start and ready to make my beacon. The full beacon base is in place and I've dug myself a hole that goes right the way up to the surface there. So let's get this going. First of all, we place this guy, then we click in and we've got a Beaconator and haste too. So we pop this in and we're good to go. This is going to be absolutely fantastic. I cannot wait. Ah, oh, Instamine, I've missed you. I've been very hard at work crafting and moving things as you can see by this what looks like a chess monster but is actually uh, quite well organized with different things in different places for what is going to be my starter build. Now it's not a traditional starter house it's actually going to be the start of my area and it's going to be over here in the mesa. So first thing to do is clear some space and get the main platform set up and then I'll tell you a bit more about it. Stage one of my build is now complete and as you can see here we've got an awesome dock side that I've put in place complete with some crates and some barrels and some things that have been dropped off but what have they been dropped off by well that you'll have to wait to see um, but yeah I'm really really pleased with this and as you may be able to tell from my skin the eagle-eyed amongst you might gather that this area and my first area and base in general is going to be in an industrial steampunk style so what I'm going to be going for is loads and loads of machinery, loads of Victorian style builds with contraptions on them, lots of cogs, lots of chimneys. It's going to be absolutely brilliant and I can't wait to show you the next bits of this base. But before we do that, let's just give you a quick run through of this. So we've already got these barrels. We've also got these cleats so the ships can connect themselves to it. We've got some buffers there. Those you will learn more about a bit later on. But if we come down this slipway and head through here, we'll see that we actually have this underground waterway stroke sewer that's going to connect
come through here as well and potentially I might add some entrance ways and some doorways down to some other stuff underground in here but this is going to come through to a waterway that's going to be lined eventually by buildings and potentially we're going to cut through that cliff and keep this river running through and then we're going to have things on here we're going to have a wharf so we're going to have some buildings around this and I have done some maps of this area. So this is kind of the basic area, as you can see from above. It's quite a big dock that we've got to work with. And there's more to come, like I said. Um, but yeah, I've got this here. And then I'm going to update with these two maps once we've done the rest of the builds for this first episode for the epic starter house. So without any further ado, I think it's time for me to collect some of these items here and start building in the form of a bit of a time lapse. And now phase two of the epic starter base is in place, which is this steampunk crane. Uh, I've tried to make it, even though it's steampunk, as kind of realistic in terms of physics as possible. So we've got this wire that's connecting to this pinnacle and this drive shaft that helps us to winch this crane up to whatever angle we need it. We've also got these rails that it's running along, which we put into the dock area. And we've got this giant steam tank that's actually powering the whole thing. And obviously we've got the chimneys coming on here and yeah, really really happy with how this has turned out with the big cogs let's go and have a quick look inside because it does also have an interior so if we come up here we've got these ladders that allow us to get up and down and believe me I needed these building it because I wouldn't like to tell you the number of times that I fell off this uh, but yeah really pleased with how it's ended up we've got this lovely lovely area going around the crane so this would spin and allow the crane to point in different directions and we've also got this lovely walkway so this this will be able to give us a great view of some of the future builds that we do in this area. But if we head up here into the cab, we can open the door like so and we've got the controls here for the crane so great visibility obviously a nice big window we can see how the actual winch is doing through this little window here but great visibility of what we're actually carrying on the crane itself and then we've got this fantastic machine as well with loads and loads of detail but you can see this connects to that steam chamber so this is a big furnace that's powering the whole thing the power comes through runs this conveyor belt that goes right the way up here which winches up and down the crane arm so yeah really really like this there's also a little bed so this would also work as a as a base a little sleeping area but the next thing that we're going to be doing is something that's going to be hanging from this crane and this is going to be the third and final stage of our absolutely epic starter base area so it's time now to kick off another time lapse As the sun comes up on another day, we have now finished our awesome survival starter base. And we've got this giant crane that you saw before, but now we've added to that with the actual starter house itself, which is going to be inside this amazing piranha submarine. So yeah, really, really pleased with how this design has come out. It's got all of the classic elements of steampunk in there, loads of copper, loads of gradients in there as well throughout the build. Can't wait until we've got our elytra next episode. So tune in for that and then we can have a real good fly around this base uh, we've got the pointed drip stone for the teeth which works so well in this build and yeah just so happy with how this has turned out and really do think we've hit that brief of the most epic survival starter base ever constructed and yeah let me know in the comments what you think of this we've obviously got these big steam tanks these are powering a giant engine at the back here which you can see from the dot so once this is lowered into the water then this is gonna go like absolute stink there and you can see the power coming into it and just yeah the adventures that we would be able to have in this submarine are great we've got our slipway that we can get up and down to the uh we've got uh, up and down to our boat and then we've got this gangplank that takes us up to the inside of the build the interior is not done yet i'm going to be decorating this next episode so make sure that you tune in for that hit that like button hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out and yeah we can see over to the village that we took over we've got the village that we still to explore and then when we come here we can go down and look at the 
underneath as well so there's two floors on this and we can see out of the mouth through the teeth to the area over here and really really like how that looks loads of space down here as well and just so pleased with how this has come together so all that's left to be said is i hope you've enjoyed this video thank you very much for watching Today, I'm going to be expanding on our awesome steampunk dock with an amazing new factory build. But first, my starter submarine is currently empty. So fitting the interior gives me a chance to tell you that the factory build later is going to have a very special purpose and will pave the way for the other buildings. So make sure you stick around to find out what that is. So heading up this gangplank, we come to the main entryway and we've got a light here to show that the door is open. Obviously, we can only go and set off once this light is off because otherwise it's not watertight. And we come into just a little entry section there's some barrels that have been dropped off here and we've just got a really really simple little sleeping quarters over here with some extra storage now what i've tried to do with this interior is i'm going to try and be doing with all of the interiors in this area is keep them authentic to the build but also try and make them practical and give them some kind of purpose if we come through here we've got the main storage and there's loads and loads of storage just dotted around here some of it that's empty some of it that's full of stuff so i've moved things in We've got some extra machinery as well, pumping power to the exterior of the ship. And we can head up to the top of the submarine here and take a look around if we need to, and then he head back down. And this all leads through to our main bridge area. So we've got our little seat that we can steer the ship and got some machinery to control the speed, etc. And then we've got this, which is our periscope that connects up to the top of the ship and allows us when we're underwater to see around. Coming downstairs, first of all, we hit this area. Now, this is the main control center. So this is the engineering section. And this is, again, a practical smelting area. So all of these blast furnaces feed through into this barrel here. We've got some more blast furnaces either side. And then we've got some furnaces, again, feeding it down into these chests on either side and some more furnaces across the bottom so this should meet all of our smelting needs that we have then coming down here we have this opulent and decadent area here i'm really really pleased with this i tried to give it kind of a a victorian feel but still bringing in the fact that you've got an industrial element with these big metal beams holding up the ceiling and then we've also got a little bookshelf i'm just climbing up by accident and some nice rugs on the floor and we can sit here stare out the mouth at whatever we're we're traveling towards and of course what victorian style area would be complete without the grandfather clock so yeah really really pleased with this we've got a jukebox as well for some music and if we head back here we've got the engines so we've got the two areas these are the boiler areas that power the whole thing and we can get rid of any rubbish as well we need to in here uh, or we can put these out if we get annoyed with the sound and we've got a little flint and steel here so the other one is through here as well and this then obviously connects up to the engineering area so yeah quite a lot packed into a small space but i'm really really pleased with it particularly this room i just love the feel and the look of this i've set myself up a temporary nether portal and that is to take us back across to the original village that we overtook and that transports us through the nether and it's not a very long journey at all for us to get back to that area and it's in that area that the next thing needs to be done and that next thing is to expand the villager setup so although we've got all of the librarians that we need and various other things we will need to farm ourselves up some ender pearls to make sure we've got enough of those because i want to take on the dragon and also whilst we are doing that I need to add some more villagers and some more pods because I will need an awful lot of bricks for the next build that I have planned over in our steampunk area. And at the moment, I don't want to be digging out clay and trying to smelt that up when you can get it from stonemasons. So I'm going to craft myself plenty of the stone cutters, get myself some stonemasons across here, make sure they're all zombified and start building up a reserve of bricks. A few moments later. I've extended my trading area with these extra four booze and that's opened up a whole bunch of space if I want to extend it any further. But at the moment, I think that these four masons will do the trick and I've also unlocked all of their trades and cured them up. So this is the brick trade that I need. And also it's useful to have the quartz trade because mining quartz in the nether isn't that much fun, to be honest. So I've got those done and I am now collecting some resources. I think 
I've actually got enough now. One more thing that I do need to do though, and I need to consider is that it was a miserable time shifting resources from here back and forth to the area that I wanted last time I did the build. So instead, I am going to go and fight the Ender Dragon and go to the end so I can get myself an Elytra and I can most importantly get myself a whole bunch of Shulker boxes. And because of this, I've been crafting up some resources. So I've got the Eyes of Ender here. I've been filling up my Ender chest with various different things. So always take an Anvil and some Unbreaking and Mending books for your Elytra when you pick it up. Potions of Slow Falling. The one thing that I still also need to create is a whole bunch of rockets. So I'll craft those up and then it's off we go. I've come over to our starter base because if I'm going to find myself a stronghold, I want to find the one that's closest to this. So we've come into this big open space and let's throw this up in the air and over this direction and into the unknown. And here we are. We've come down straight from the surface and we are now in the... Wow, okay. We've managed to spawn directly at the portal room, which is fantastic. And there are exactly 12 spaces for our 12 eyes of ender, which is a piece of luck. So we'll I'll get rid of all of this lava. I'll get myself prepared and then we'll light the portal. Like all great Minecrafters, I got a bit distracted. But on the plus side, the stronghold is now connected up through the nether with my spawn set at the starter base, and I'm ready to go. So let's get this portal lit and see what the dragon fight brings us. Here we go, let's just get some blocks on my hotbar and get the pickaxe ready. Hopefully we'll get a nice end island. Everything's good to go. Off we head. I spawned in a box and after mining out, it was time to take on the dragon. The end island was a nice one with plenty of space to move about and take out the crystals. And before long, she was on her last embers of health. As my ears were assaulted by her final scream, I enjoyed the XP shower. Excellent. A little bit of building later and we have a nice safe route to the end portal here. So the end gateway. And I always do this because the number of times that I've come through one of these and been teetering on the edge, I just find it, it stops all of the anxiety at least. So one thing that I am going to do is replace this here block with a crafting table. And then I'm going to make a trap door because again, that's another thing that I find is it's such an easier way to actually get through this portal now that you can go into swim mode and it gives you two of the trapdoors ready for you to come back the other side as well let's take the leap pop this here and off we go to the end arriving at the outer end islands i immediately angered an enderman and sadly there wasn't a city in sight not ideal time to get bridging then I've turned my render distance up and it is paying off because first thing I noticed was this end gateway, which I thought, oh, we'll go towards that because that'll be useful for coming back. But then in the background just behind it, this boat just spawned in, which is absolutely perfect. So I've not had to travel too far, probably about 900 blocks from that direction. Uh, I've just been going from the big island to the big island. And now I've just got to make my way across here and get myself into that boat one eternity later so after much much bridging we've now got to this end city and the first thing i'm gonna do is head over here to see if i can get beneath this boat and just pillar up to get hold of the elytra and then take this city from the top down after building a nerve-wracking pillar over the void i finally broke into the bottom of the ship and was rewarded with a shiny new elytra and some serious loot after clearing the shulkers off the boat, I headed downstairs to upgrade my elytra and make myself my first shulker box. Then it was time to test my wings and start collecting some shulker shells. After many, many end cities being raided, I am done. So it's time to head back through here and now back to the base to see the loots that I got. One scroll through the end credits later and ah, home sweet home. So now for the question, what did we bring back from the end? We got loads of building blocks and plenty of end stone, loads and loads of potions of healing and also some armor, just some basic stuff here, but an entire shulker box worth of decent diamond armor and gear. And then the main event, 
we got obviously the dragon egg and a couple of dragon heads and two and a bit stacks of shulker shells on top of these five as well loads of diamonds as well i was really surprised by how many diamonds we got some dragon's breath lots of gold which is good because i was running low on that after making golden apples and we've got these six elytras on top of the one that i'm wearing also got lots of ender chests there which is going to be useful as well but one thing that it did show me flying around the end is I need a good source of rockets. And for that, I need gunpowder. And there's also some other things that I'm running a bit low on. And so I am going to head back over to our village area and then head out into the ocean, which is nearby, and build myself Nembomb's hostile mob farm, which is an absolutely fantastic design. The link will be in the description as ever. Uh, but now there seems to be an unwanted guest that I've got to deal with and get back over and start building this farm. Now the farm is finished. I've added soul campfires at the bottom just in case any of the mobs fall with armor on. And if we head up now to the AFK platform, which is way, way up here. And now I'm going to go AFK for a bit to see what we can get. One dinner later and it was time to fly down and see the payoff. That's given me loads of extra gunpowder and some other useful stuff too. I did set up half the platform so they could only spawn creepers and spiders and I might adjust those to stop the spiders later. But overall I'm pretty happy with that haul. And now I have this beautiful shulker box full of rockets and my spare elytra ready to go. So this means that I can now fly to my heart's content. So yeah, I'm going to pop this away into the ender chest and then we need to explore a little bit around the area. So we've we've mapped out this area. We know some of the stuff that's going on around us, but not really that much. And I think now we've got the rockets. It's the perfect time to go on a bit of an explore, mainly looking for some moss because I haven't got any moss i haven't got any of the things from the lush caves biome and i'd really really like to get hold of them and would you believe it just across from our base which is just back here i can see an azalea bush azalea tree rather and also we have a desert temple so that's really really good first thing to do though is i'll explore the desert temple and then we can dig down and there should be a lush cave just down here somewhere in the temple is there any decent loot no nothing in here uh some more gunpowder which i now no longer need and no sadly no enchanted golden apples that teeny tiny hole of light is the surface and we have come a long long way down now but we finally found our way into the lush caves now there are some nasties around here that i'm gonna have to clear out including this drowned guy who just converted in front of me very loudly and made me jump like you wouldn't believe but i'm gonna clear those out and then have a bit of an explore around here because lush caves are absolutely awesome some more digging down and it's brought us through into our first lush cave area so here we have it finally some moss i've been looking for you all over now that is a rare find some deep slate coal that is definitely one not to break down and to keep the block because yeah you don't get much of this stuff some more exploring and i discovered this other lush cave that's come through to the surface and what's more important this little dude here swimming around so let me get him and hopefully find one more i'll have a look around anyway see if i can find another one so over here i can spy another couple of axolotl so that is going to be perfect so that i can pick them up and start breeding them on my travels i picked up a buried treasure map and as you can see if i turn this way it's brought us basically right back to our base so i am gonna go and dig around here somewhere I believe it'll be and hopefully get something good out of it and after a bit of digging around we have it just here and we've got a heart of the sea but not too much else not the best but it'll do why when you get back does it always take you so long to unpack but still I am back now and I have unpacked and this is all the stuff that I managed to get so I got a fair few axolotl in the end plenty to breed up and I plan on using these guys for a squid farm at some point and also to take on an ocean monument so yeah a whole bunch of other stuff found a couple more treasure chests so some more hearts of the sea this is probably the rarest find though the deep slate coal ore because you just can't get it anywhere and then all of the stuff from the lush caves so yeah all in all a pretty good trip 
now to the factory i'm on the dock area and i've moved where we've got our map so this was the first map when we'd created the area and this one now has the submarine and the crane there also you will see that there is a beacon here and the beacon is there so that i can clear this area so haste 2 beacon is definitely necessary that took quite some time uh, as you can see by the fact that we have box after box of materials that we've dug out here and two full diamond pickaxes that are pretty much worn out so yeah working on the third one here that took a long time but we've now got the area that we need ready to build and all i need to do now is collect up some of the materials and start building I've extended our dock area and created this extra section down here ready for our build and been doing a whole bunch of crafting to get everything that we need for this. So now I think it's time for a bit of a time lapse. From the cockpit of our submarine, you get an absolutely fantastic view of the exterior of the factory, which is now complete. And I'm going to take you over in a second and show you the interior. And as you can see, this factory itself is powered by slime. This is part of the reason why we needed the slime farm. And the slime gets pumped into this container, which then goes down into the factory itself. Then approaching the side of the factory, you can start to see some of the details. So we've got the cogs here. We've got some big shipping containers here ready to be picked up from the side of the dock. All of the details that bring the thing to life as we come round, including this here winch that can pick stuff up. And also this cursed lighting, which I really love this design and yeah, really pleased with how that's turned out. As we head inside, we can see that all of this is slime powered. So the slime comes in from outside here gets pumped around this section goes into first of all this machine which has got this giant wheel and this flywheel is going to be running the things that are going to be here which i'll tell you about in a second the slime also comes down into this machine which is the one that powers the winch through these cables that go right the way through and it also powers a conveyor belt that runs through here so this runs up and then turns this which also turns some cogs on the outside of the building the other thing to see is we've got this fantastic furnace here so this is another power source for the entire thing and this is obviously powered by some lava going through that is also cooking off the slime itself and then we've got the waste products the orange here that comes out if i come through the door here and this unfortunately not very environmentally friendly gets pumped into the river just there but yeah we've got things like some glowing crates filled with the waste products here as well so really really pleased with how they this turned out one more little secret if we go like this then we've got ourselves a bit of an etho inspired secret compartment inside here no idea what i'm going to do here yet if you've got any ideas let me know in the comments i'd love to hear them and heading back out here the last thing to tell you about is what we're going to be having here so if we count these there are actually 16 of these trapdoors and these 16 trapdoors represent the 16 colors of wool and what i am going to bring in some sheep and have a full wool factory going on here all powered by the slime that's coming through so yeah this is going to look absolutely awesome with the different colors of glass for the different sheep all of the sheep along here and this is the theme that i want to go for with the things that i'm building in this world i want to make them practical but i also want to make them have touches that are in keeping with the steampunk theme so as we can see we've got the big machinery but then we're going to have a practical element like the wool farm just running either side of this it's going to be really really cramped really confined which i wanted it to be in here once that's all done but yeah that's the next thing is i need to gather the sheep bring them over here and start building up these wool farms and as if by magic the wool farm is now complete and it looks super duper colorful either side of these machines i'm really really happy with how this fills in the space i did have to make some changes to the regular wool farm design just so that i could fit it into a smaller gap uh, but these use more observers and they're all working away beautifully so yeah really really love this now and it's a practical factory as well so i'm super Super pleased with that hopefully you've enjoyed this factory build if you have let me know in the comments i'd really like to hear those and uh, yeah make sure that you leave a like as well because that really helps the video get shared to more people 
Hello there and welcome back to the awesome steampunk dock area which I'm going to be adding to later on with this amazing new factory build. Let me know in the comments what you think this factory is going to be for and hit that like button and whilst you do I'm going to add a courtyard to our existing build. Now that's done I think that finishes off this side of the base beautifully and uh, yeah it's mainly just got some slime there which is obviously lit from underneath as well and some of the waste products from the big furnace in here just to fill things up with this nice fence going around as well so I really like the fence design it just carries on from the walls here and of course as it is a wool factory we've got wool of some of the colors outside I didn't want to overdo it and put all the colors in so I've just picked a few of the colors and actually in here whilst I've been doing that I've also been doing some AFKing in here and most of these have now got a significant supply of wool however there are a couple of lazy sheep so this one here and worst of all these two seem to not be producing anywhere near as much wool as the others i haven't got a clue why if anybody does know why let me know in the comments so i can fix it but yeah the rest of them are all doing good work so i think these are maybe just some lazy sheep next on the agenda i need a solution because this is going to be quite a large steampunk area so this is going to go right the way across the mesa there's a lovely hill that we've got in behind this factory and there's a great area in that space as well that i want to build in so this is going to be quite a lot of steampunk builds and one of the key blocks for steampunk builds as we can see from the fish here is copper and i used most of my reserves because these blocks here particularly just the main copper blocks super expensive so i use most of my reserves building this and the remainder of it building various bits within this factory and we're going to need a good supply of this going forward luckily enx04 has come to our rescue with a brand new copper farm using zombie reinforcements so i'm going to collect some resources and then the perfect place to build that is in the end which we unlocked as well so i'm going to head through the portal get to the end and then start the build which is mainly going to be flattening out some ground so the spawning spaces and then putting together the copper farm itself The really, really simple farm build is now done and I'm back at the base because I need, first of all, these things, the name tanks, to get some zombies to actually stock the farm. Uh, the zombies then turn into drowned and the drowned drop the copper, which is awesome. I also need a couple of special swords. One that's just got sweeping edge and has got unbreaking on it and looting to actually get the ingots. And one of them, which is going to need to be there to kill the zombies. So that needs a sharpness five and sweeping edge to actually apply the killing so yeah i've got to now get some swords from this guy a couple of swords one two unenchant these and get some books and put these swords together with those made i headed back to the stronghold so i could wrangle up a couple of zombies to take to the end with a little bit of swiping the farm is now loaded and uh, now i need to plonk down some water and get an afk session going so that i can get some copper and when this thing gets going it is crazy like you would not believe as you can see by the absolutely ridiculous levels that i've got i've been doing a fair bit of afk in here and this is now ready for me to come back to at any point these guys are pretty much carrying and holding stuff they don't add to the mob cap or anything so anytime i want to come back and get some more copper i can come back and do some more afk and you can't afk completely yet because i haven't got a regen beacon and because you're swinging your sword you do use up a little bit of your health uh while well, your food so you do need to keep eating but the results speak for themselves i've now got three chests worth of copper ingots a little bit more as well that i'm just going to leave there ready for next time but i'm going to turn these into some of the blocks and take these back and that should be everything i need for now knowing full well if i do need more it's only a quick trip over to the end to get this thing going again back at the village area the first load of copper is now laid out and aging so i have some more afk to do now to wait for this stuff to all oxidize and then pick it up and set out the next load so yeah i died as you can see by my levels having gone down significantly i starved to death in the farm because i didn't come back soon enough and hadn't eaten and just just starved from all the swiping so i've now set myself up a regeneration beacon here because it is very very much needed mainly because it was a complete nightmare to get my stuff back i came back this place was teeming with zombie reinforcements there were so many that as soon as you hit any more zombie reinforcements came due to the nature of the farm and i just couldn't get inside here before i got absolutely swamped so i came back a second time this time with armor and food and stuff 
still got absolutely wrecked third time was the charm i came back with golden apples i came back with potions of regeneration speed strength you name it i had it and just about even then i only just managed to make it inside here because of all the baby zombies so lesson learned regeneration beacon up and now to try and get some of these levels back and some more copper Many levels later, whilst all the copper has been aging away, I've been doing a bit of AFKing, but I've also been collecting up a whole bunch of the woods. So I've now got loads ready for the next build, including the warped stem and the crimson stem. Now these took a lot longer, but they were helped significantly by a couple of simple little farms that I put together. So first of all, we have the farms here, which are just a three by three of the different nylium types and you can then just bone meal the middle pick up all the items including your fungus and you then bring them over here this is basically just a big area of hoppers with a bit of nylium in here you plant your mushroom you then bone meal it up immediately take out the bottom two just so that it doesn't turn this and then no matter how tall it is you can head up because with the scaffolding here the leaves won't replace the scaffolding block so you can always make it right the way up to the top and then simply using a hoe take out all of the nice blocks around here most of which you can then just compost down to give yourself loads more bone meal and then just yeah chop your way down through the tree and anything that drops will then fall onto the hoppers beneath mostly anyway this tree is really tall so it has dropped a bit further this is a great way to actually get hold of the wood there's probably a better way that you can do this with loads and loads of scaffolding all the way round so that the actual leaves don't don't grow up at all but this has been doing me pretty well i've got a whole bunch more stuff that i've picked up so yeah this is all good i've got to farm these and place another lot but now i need to head out and get prepared because i want to take on an ocean monument but before i take on the ocean monument there's two things that i'm going to do first thing is go out and try and get myself a trident and the first step towards doing this is some puffer fish. Has anybody ever thought how a puffer fish head looks a little bit like Peter Griffin? Anyway, I've been out and I've now got some resources to make some water breathing potions. And the next thing that I'm going to do before that is create myself a little axolotl farm so that I can get myself some little friends to help me when I do take on the ocean monument. And then whilst those guys are breeding and growing up, I can go and get that trident. Here I've set up my really, really simple axolotl breeding pool. And as you can see from these guys swimming around, I've already bred one up. And here, let's see if I can breed some more. Which ones haven't been fed? There's one. And any more that haven't been fed? Oh, no. No, I need to get this guy before he gets eat. There we go, because they will kill him otherwise. So hopefully these guys will do some breeding. They're doing a little dance and we've got some baby axolotls going around. So what I'll do is I'll get some more tropical fish and probably breed these guys up once more. And then that'll give me a nice army to take to the ocean monument. I tried searching the ocean for ruins and drowns wielding tridents, but had absolutely no luck. After a couple of hours doing that, I decided that it'd be much easier to build a simple trident farm. So I did. So the farm's now done and I needed to make some tweaks, namely I needed to fix where we have the turt legs in here and I needed to lower the AFK platform. So basically it's a big block of flowing water that comes down and drops the drowned through onto this platform. They walk to either one of the turt legs and then just get washed down here ready to be swiped at with a looting sword and this one happens to have smite on as well. And although it's not the fastest farm in the world, it has very much done the trick. And from this, I've managed to get myself four tridents. So the key thing now will be to fix some of these up and get these back, get some books so that I can get impaling and also loyalty on one of them. And then we'll be ready to take on that ocean monument. Back at the village, I've got myself a new librarian so I can get myself Impaling 5 and I've cured him up and unlocked all of his trades. I did find that I had loyalty on one of these guys already, loyalty 2, so I combined some of those, which means that I've now got all the books, loyalty, impaling, mending and unbreaking for what I want this initial trident to be. And I've also put together a box of goodies, night vision and water breathing here so that I can go over and take on the ocean monument that we found over there. The only other thing that I need to do is bucket up a whole bunch of my axolotl army. 
So here's the ocean monument we're going to be taking and it is only about four or five hundred blocks from the village over this way so not far to travel at all. Next I am going to put on my armor because yeah going in with an elytra is a little bit risky. Take my water breathing and break into the top to take out the guardian before taking the two in the wings. All being well it shouldn't take too long. And it didn't. In fact, it was so quick that I didn't even have a chance to release my Axolotl army until I killed the Elder Guardians and was exploring the Ocean Monument looking for a sponge room. Sadly, there wasn't one. So I went out and found another Ocean Monument and raided that too. Back at the village now, and here's the loot that we got. So most importantly, we got loads of Dark Prismarine because this is really expensive. We also got the wet sponges and a whole bunch of the other blocks, including loads of sea lanterns as well, and this gold. So really pleased with how that's gone. And now I am gonna make this farm some crafting later. Everything that I need for this build is now in these shulker boxes, including a whole bunch of invisibility potions so the guardians won't be able to see me. And for the water breathing, I've got a conduit it that I can set up with some of the blocks that I picked up from raiding these ocean monuments. So the farm I'll build is a logical geek boy design which I'll pop in the description. Now it's time to head over there and start a bit of a time lapse. I've been AFK for about 20 minutes up on the platform and as you might notice by the levels when I was setting this platform up I had a little bit of an accident I thought I had my elytra on but I didn't and I plummeted to my death but luckily there's a lovely big platform here to catch all my stuff so I got it back really easily however yeah 20 minutes or so here and we have got loads and loads of stuff I made a slight adjustment to the design to lower the spawning platform of the soul sand by a block and lowered the AFK platform by a block as well. And yeah, we've got loads of stuff coming through. So I'm really happy with how this is going. I'll come back to AFK again later, but I'm gonna collect this stuff up, take it back to the base and then go to the copper farm to try and get some levels back. A few moments later. Now, after a full night of AFK, let's see what we've got. I must admit, I have already been down here just to clear out all of the fish because you get a lot of it and I'll have to add in a filter at some point. But if we head down whoop, like this, we can see that the whole thing, apart from the gaps from the fish, is just absolutely full. It was completely overflowing when I got down here before some of the fish are filtering back in. But loads and loads of stuff. So the one of my favorite things with this farm is the fact that you also get quite a lot of ink sacks so making dark prismarine which was historically a nightmare is much easier really really love it props to logical geek boy with the link in the description if you want to make this yourself two hours later well, that crafting took me far longer than I expected. However, the output from this farm has been incredible. So we've got an entire shulker box full of dark prismarine, one of sea lanterns and one of prismarine bricks. So that has given me loads of resources to take back to the base. But that's not all. We've also got more than a chest more of the dark prismarine, an entire double chest of sea lanterns. I don't think I'm going to need any other lighting ever again. And then also nearly another chest of prismarine bricks with a double chest of regular of prismarine so that wasn't even everything that was in here and um, we've still got loads of the crystals for more sea lanterns i think that that will do me for quite some time now to take this back to the base and start getting ready for the next build i'm back over at the steampunk area now and i've laid out all of my resources i've been doing some resource gathering obviously i got the wood earlier but i've added to that a whole bunch of stone because we're going to need to extend the dock area and loads of deep slate for the new build as well alongside bricks and various other things but that is going to be the next thing setting up a beacon moving all of these maps i definitely need a more permanent place for these and clearing this area so that i can build the extension for the dock and now the dock is extended so we've got some more stuff over here that is on the dock here we've got another one of these giant crates i think that this balances out the other wing that we've got on this side and gives us loads and loads of scope to expand further this way there's a huge space that we've got that's going to be taken up by the build and here we've extended the canal going across and down as well so i want to take this canal right the way through the whole steampunk area which means i'm going to have to get rid of this at some point soon 
I've left this area as well. There's going to be something coming in here that is connected to the build. But yeah, really pleased how this is going. And I've created just this little thingy of floating barrels where you can jump across the water if you want. That's just a little bit of interest and a bit of fun. I've also put all of the materials together and crafted up everything, which took longer than I'd care to tell you. And there's quite a lot of materials going into this build. Next, I'm going to sleep and then kick off another time lapse. And after many, many hours building and decorating, the next factory is done. And I'm really, really pleased with how this one's turned out. The theme is clearly a little bit different from this. This one's mainly about the pipes. And we've got these three absolutely massive pipes pumping various different liquids into the building. We've got the magma, we've got the amethyst, and of course the slime being pumped in. I just love how these completely overshadow this little section down here and just show you the scale of this build. But I love the contrast of these three colors as well. What we've also got down here is a little doorway that takes us into our section that runs through to the ocean. And yeah, this will mean that if I do connect up something down here, we can get in and out easily. But to the main event, as we head up here, this building, which like I said, really pleased how this has turned out. Loving the color scheme with the end stone bricks and bricks just complementing what is actually actually some rooted dirt in there as one of the colors so rooted dirt jungle and some of the granite alongside the stone and this is going to be a special entrance because this is going to be the exit from the dock to the main area of the steampunk place so we can carry on the dock around here with some more buildings and some more areas of the wharf but this is going to then connect up to the main road network and the other buildings that are going to populate our steampunk area and as you can see we've got some deliveries this one carrying some slides with these late Victorian Georgian style vehicles but with a steampunk twist and this one with the pipes going around it I'll show you that one a bit later but this here is the main crux of the building we've got these two huge boilers on the front pumping some of their steam into the rest of the building alongside these liquids coming through these giant pipes and the first thing with these liquids the amethyst here goes into power our nether portal which I've moved from over there which was rather unsightly and it comes through into this big tank and there is processed to take it two different ways one through into the nether portal the other way through here to the main aim of this building which is a smeltery so we will see here I have built myself a super smelter this is a 16 furnace array so we can see some of the furnaces but I've used some bubble columns in front of the furnaces just to add a bit of depth with some lighting and then as we come around here another bit of machinery processing some of the steam here on the edge and then here we've got the main section to this but here we can actually stock up this minecart and this will then give us the items to smell and everything gets deposited in this chest here obviously there's nothing in there quite yet so this is the main thing the main smeltery and obviously there's the machine this is again i wanted a very crowded feel in here we've got this stairway that comes up and as you go up the stairs you can see pumping the amethyst into the top of this machine but then we've got an upstairs as well so we've got some slime sitting around some of these boxes and then we've got this, which is going to the chimney, has got another boiler type thing. And this one is being powered by the slime that's coming in the top. And this isn't just for show as well. If we come around the back here, we have a second smelter. So this one is using some blast furnaces. But no, we're not done. We've got that one, which looks really, really cool and feeds up to the chimney itself. But over here, if we step back, we have got a third machine that is dealing with the magma that's coming through so this magma gives a lovely glowing effect here around all of the sides again we've got various different pipes going to the machines and these go around to the outside of the build as well so we've got the magma and this is basically just a big tank from the outside it looks like it contains just the magma but if we head down here you can see we've got a chest and if we come down here this is our smoke array i wanted to have all three of the different types of smelting in this one building just so everything was here but functional 
functional as well as looking good so it's not just for the decoration here it's all about the functionality really pleased with how this went anybody who put that this was going to be a super smelter in the comments well done you got it absolutely spot on let me know in the comments again what you'd like to see the functionality being for the buildings for the next episode i've already got some ideas but yeah i love to hear in the comments also leave a like and uh, let me know if you've enjoyed the video hello there and welcome back to the steampunk dock area where today we have our biggest expansion yet with a brand new warehouse build but first I need these little guys because I want some turt legs. I used most of the ones I had up for the Trident farm last episode. And today I am also going to be building a big gold farm on the roof of the nether so that I can get myself some piglin trading to get things like gravel and blackstone from them. I'm going to take this seagrass, give these guys a good feeding and see what they can provide me. A few moments later. This turtle has been absolutely doing work. And yeah, hopefully I should get what I need soon. Three, absolute bumper crop. Don't you dare squish your own eggs. That would be, that would just be wrong. I need you to move so I can silk touch those. But the good thing is I can immediately then give these guys more seagrass. There's no cooldown on turtle breeding. So you can get a decent number of eggs pretty quickly. And this should, fingers crossed, give me everything that I need. Can you really call yourself a Minecraft YouTuber if you don't get totally distracted by something completely unnecessary? I think I may have developed a serious egg problem because I have absolutely no need for this many eggs or this many turtles. No clue what I can do with them. I can collect the scoots. I've already got enough for a helmet. So yeah, we shall, we shall see, but I've done it. It's done now. I think I'd better move to collecting some other resources for the gold farm before this gets any worse. Oh dear. In a much more sensible location. So the main thing that I'll need for this build, which is by Logical Geek Boy, link in the description as always, is going to be a load of magma blocks. Now I've used loads in the previous builds, but I need to get another 3,600, uh, which is going to be a bit of a thing. Excuse me, I'm doing a bit to camera, do you mind? Anyway, so I'm going to pop this potion of fire resistance and start flying about looking for some of the different sections of magma that you've got around like that. That one's probably not the best, but I'll see what I can find. And I've got lots down here, for example, that I can then not kill myself too much, uh, get myself out of this lava and get myself a lot of this magma. So I mined and I mined and I mined. And eventually, all of the resources are here. We've got loads and loads of magma blocks. We've got some building blocks and some ladders as well. And we've got glass to spawn proof everything. Now we are in the perfect location here as we come through the portal because we're in the nether wastes, which is where you want to be for the gold farm. And we're right next to a crimson forest. Now this is where the piglins will spawn. So this can give us a great source of the piglins that we need for the bartering once we've built the bartering farm up the top here as well. I also have got a good deal of TNT and all of my redstone stuff in the ender chest so that I can blow a hole in the bedrock ceiling to come back down. Even though I'm going to build another portal up there, I don't want to get stuck on the nether roof. That's a really, really bad place to be. So now I am going to pillar up here, find a spot on the ceiling and see about getting on top of the nether. So I've dug out a space around our ladder at the top of the nether roof and found exactly what I'm looking for. So this is the bedrock and it's at 127 and there's a double spot here. So what I'm going to do is come up here and using the logical geek boy method, if we throw an ender pearl on top of this, it should glitch us through the nether ceiling and we then need to jump twice. And here we are on top. So that has worked absolutely perfectly. What I'm going to do now is mark this with a torch. So that is where we're going to be able to break. But this gives us everything that we need now. And now we can start preparing and finding the right place to build the gold farm. So I popped myself a little hole in the bedrock ceiling, had a little detour to get myself some Frostwalker boots and started building the six layers of the gold farm. The farm is now complete and if I look down through this platform here, right the way down we can see an endless stream of the piglins pathfinding towards the turtlegs and heading towards their inevitable doom. 
So yeah, this is going to be giving us loads and loads of resources. The only thing that I've changed from the original Logical Geek Boy design is that I've lowered the AFK platform a little bit. And that is because when I put the Piglin trading area in, I also want that to be loaded at the same time. By doing that, it gives just a little bit larger area of the sphere of spawning. But the rates here are fantastic. Again, it's not going to impact the rates. But I'm going to leave this going for a little while and see how many resources we can get. Ah, satisfying. And having turned all of the gold into ingots, we've got almost a full chest. So that's going to give us a great start once I set the piglin trading setup over here. And I also, uh, completely unnecessary, but I thought it would look cool, destroyed this piece of bedrock. Um, blew up most of these chests in the, the meantime, but I think now that it's done with this crafting table here just in the bedrock, it looks really, really cool. The other cool thing that I did was come down here and I put glass and cleaned up the walls a little bit to make this now completely spawn proof and added some sea lanterns into the ceiling just so it didn't look completely rubbish. Uh, but next I need to work out what resources I'm going to need for the piglin trading setup which is going to be over here and I'm going to head back to the base. Yeah that's a lot of turtles. I've been looking through all the chests here back at the village and I've already looked at the ones in the steampunk area and I've been looking for some ice but I don't have any uh, so I'm going to need quite a lot of blue ice for the piglin trading I'm also going to be needing quite a bit of ice for the builds that's going to go into the steampunk area and if you have any ideas what you think that build is going to be make sure that you leave it down in the comments beneath and whilst you're there if you don't already hit that like button hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future episodes but now i am going to have to head out in search of some kind of an icy biome to get myself some supplies so i found some snow but what i'm really looking for is a village or ah absolutely this an ice spikes biome or some kind of a frozen ocean so in ice spikes and in frozen ocean you get the blue ice which means that you don't have to craft it and hopefully if we fly around here somewhere i can see actually some that's down there so if we land here this is perfect for what we need to mine away and give us the resources ready for the next build and look at that, over there we've got a lovely little family of polar bears. At some point I plan on getting some polar bears as pets, so I'll have to make sure I come back. Also over here, it looks like there could be some powdered snow, and I'm going to need that for the future as well, so I'll pick some of that up whilst I'm here. I managed to find this little area of the powdered snow, so as you can see, the texture changes slightly just as we go around here and on these bits. So I'm currently filling as many buckets as I can just because it's going to be easier to get this here than trying to make a powdered snow farm in the future. Now that was a very, very successful adventure. I've got myself here four shulker boxes full of powdered snow buckets, a couple of bits and pieces from a village and some more bits and pieces, a line here of ice. And then here's the main event, all of this blue ice with a whole bunch of packed ice as well. So this will definitely be more than enough for what I need and should keep me going for a long old time. But now it's time for me to collect the last few bits together, craft some stuff up, head to the nether and start building this piglin trading farm. Well, I kind of got carried away again and have been doing an awful lot of tree farming. There are a lot of hoppers and a lot of chests that I need for this build and also the one that I'm going to be doing later. So I thought I'd get myself prepared and yeah, I kind of got a bit carried away and I've created an entire chest of chests. Um, the amount of wood that has gone into this is ridiculous. This is basically a double chest of logs that's in here and on top of that, We've got all of these hoppers, which have got a huge amount of iron. Thank goodness we've got the iron farm chugging away all the time here in the background. And obviously all of these chests as well. So this is probably far, far more chests than I will need. But at least now I have a very, very good reserve of chests. And now I've got all the other components and things ready to go. So now it's back to the nether roof and start building. The final stage is to load the system up with piglins. 
All 24 piglins are now in, and that took a long, long time to collect them all. But they're all name tags, they're all in there, and they're all chucking away their resources as they get the gold. And this is being pushed along here by the uh, slime blocks, along this lovely blue ice that we picked up, and then going into the different filters. So as you can see, you look along the edge and different things drop off as they go. So I'm really pleased with how this is going. I've put in the gold that we got earlier. I am about to go AFK overnight to get a whole bunch more gold to run through this in the morning. But yeah, so far this seems to be working beautifully. I AFK'd overnight and I popped back up for another AFK session because I've already been down to check out the resources. Now I made a bit of a blunder earlier when I was doing things and setting stuff up because I pre-stacked this with some nuggets thinking, oh, that'll be great. The problem with that is pre-stacking these, I think these two, with nuggets meant that all the rotten flesh backed up. So I did lose some of the gold nuggets that we got. However, I cleared out all of the rotten flesh and yeah, we've got loads and loads of nuggets. This is from the new AFK session. I think I'm just gonna leave it to fill up on its own in the future. But yeah, so, so many gold nuggets that I'm now gonna turn into some ingots and get them across to my nice piglin trading because I want to get some of these resources, particularly the blackstone stuff, which is these first four hoppers. So yeah, really, really pleased with this. We'll probably want to at some point add some extra storage. So these hoppers up the top do have a bit of a bottleneck and I think some of the stuff is just collecting up here and despawning. But what I will probably do is either add some chests on the side to filter out the stuff coming out on these back ones so it doesn't need to go through so many hoppers to get down, or just add another line of chests on the back side. But uh, I think probably put them on the sides because what I'm thinking, now that I've got these here, now that I've got my hole in the bedrock ceiling and I've got my nether portal, that this would make quite a nice area for another hub. So yeah, I think that this is probably something that's gonna be a project for another day. But now I need to turn all of these nuggets into ingots and start the trading process. All that gold has now been traded and let's head down to see what we've got coming through in the sorting system. So we have got an absolute ton of blackstone, which is the main thing that I built this for. I'm gonna need a fair bit of this going forward. Then we've got equally loads and loads of gravel. Then going through spectral arrows, can't see any real need for those. Quartz is definitely, this is going to save a lot of mining. Quite a lot of my builds in the past have used quartz. And people say, how can I get lots of quartz? Well, here's one of the ways and trading is the other one. But getting this quartz, brilliant. Uh, and then some more in there. Uh, coming through iron nuggets, no need for those at all. Soul sand definitely could be useful. Then we've got nether bricks. This is another block that I use a lot of. And moving through ender pearls is always good to have a stock. And then string, crying obsidian, fire charges again, no real use for those. And this one here, getting a renewable source of obsidian. If you think how long it would take for you to mine what? Basically nine full stacks of obsidian is just crazy. And then it just goes into some of the other stuff. Leather, which we've already got. And then, yeah, potions of fire resistance, water bottles. So I haven't actually got soul speed. So if I pick out a couple of these soul speed three books just to take back to the base, I can put some of those on and can go nice and quick and make myself some speedy transportation methods. So I just came through my nether portal and we seem to have had a bit of a zombified piglin invasion. I don't quite know what all of these guys are doing here. One mistake that I did make before was I attacked one and in chasing me, he went back through the nether portal, which actually aggroed all of the ones in the nether. So what I'm going to do is make sure I find a nice space away from my nether portal and then just aggro these guys from a pillar. Um, obviously, these guys, yeah, they can't deal with being too far away. And I've got my trusty bow. So, yeah. Now to uh, bring these guys in and start getting rid of them because I don't know why there's so many here, but there are. A few moments later. 
So I dealt with my piglin infestation and it also then dawned on me what was happening. So when I'm in the nether loading my gold farm from my AFK platform, I'm also loading the nether portal that's on the top of the nether roof. And of course, zombified piglins can spawn in portal frames, which is the mechanic used for a lot of gold farms. So actually, yeah, unless I break my portal, then I'm just going to need to deal with uh, an infestation every time I get back. But I suppose that's all right. I now have a big grind. As you can see by the beacon that I've set up here with haste 2, I've got a significant amount of flattening and digging to do. So we have over here uh, the build and it just stops there. We also have our canal and this canal needs to be extended eventually right the way through to the other side. So there's a lot of land here and I want to bring this canal out to this point now i'm not going to do it all today uh, but this has to start somewhere so this first section i'm going to start digging out and also giving us space for the build so yeah there is going to be an awful lot of digging going on and uh, some more terracotta i've got so much terracotta i really really don't know what to do with it i might just bin this but we will see but now anyway digging begins With all of this area now cleared and the canal ready to be built out, I've got all of the blocks prepared. So I'll get building that in a second. But as you'll notice from this space, it is the biggest build that we've got to date. So really, really looking forward to getting this done. But first of all, let's get this area and the start of the road that's going to go through the rest of our steampunk area. Lazy sheep. And the canal side is now done and I'm really pleased with how this has turned out. This is going to be the road pattern that's going to go through the entire of the steampunk area as it winds through that way with various spurs coming off, including in the future. This section here is going to be a bridge. So I'm going to be coming across here with a bridge to link these two sections because having one here um, a way across is good, but there's going to have to be bridges dotted along the length so that people can get back and forth between the two sides of the town. I'm really pleased with how this has turned out. I do need to head now back over to the chest monster and start crafting up all of the items that I'm going to need for this, the next build, which is going to be quite big and quite time consuming, but it's definitely going to be worth it. Once everything was crafted, I had to get building and that means time lapse time. And now we're done and I am so so pleased with how this has turned out so here I've gone for more of the gears than some of the pipes that we've got and obviously as well we've got lots of heavy duty belts that are powering down into the ground and also again not very environmentally conscious in the steampunk world so we've got some output shall we say from the factory itself down here we've made this look like a very lived in area added in some more things around here everything from barrels through to composters and i've moved the vehicle that was just in here it was kind of crowding the entrance and now it's got a road it's got the opportunity to actually start moving along and then we've got some of these really really funky lamps again and down here on the dock we've just got a little crane so we've got the counterweight here with this which is just on a piece of string here but shh, don't tell anyone and we've got again a little lever that can pick up things from the dock side by the canal so really like how this has turned out around the side we can see the slime and the honey but now let's have a look at the main event and that is what is inside this and some of you may have already guessed this is a sorting system and it's not just a sorting system but it's a pretty big sorting system so we've got all of the chests being fed through from water streams here again loads of detail loads of steampunk machines i absolutely love the animated look of the stone cutter here we've got some chests here which are currently just full of all of the stuff that i've taken from the the chest the bits that were left over but we've got all of this layer and then i'll come back to that in a bit up here we've got another big machine here which i'll go into in a second and we've got a double layer of these going right the way along and the same if we come right the way around here so there's three stories in this same on the top level 
just here. So we've got loads and loads of storage space. I've put the filters in, i.e. the blank blocks, but I've not actually put what I want to filter through because that is going to be a huge job in itself. And I think that's going to be one between episodes, to be honest. So we have a couple of things going on here as well. Here we have the chest input, which as soon as you put anything in, will automatically spit this up into the water stream. We've also just got a really, I didn't build a an actual shulker unloader here, but I've got a low techy techy solution where you put a shulker box here. It drains through into the chest, which allows it to actually then go into the system. So you can leave a shulker box there as well, as well as the items here. But the main thing with a sorting system is whilst it's going, there is not much else that you can do. You need to stay in the area and keep it loaded. So using this awesome Il Mango design, if we head up here, what I've got is a little cobblestone generator. So if we come around here and turn this on, it will blast us a little bit because that's just the nature of it. And it creates some cobblestone inside. And if we head down just through here, we can see that that will then start to feed into some of these chests. And yeah, there's lots and lots of storage space here. Don't want to stand too close to this whilst it's going, but none of the blocks break. And it just gives us a nice supply of cobblestone whilst the sorting system is actually running. But there's not just that, there is more as well as I come down here. What I've also got here is a smooth stone generator. So we can just hit some of this smooth stone and this will be picked up by the hoppers with some lava above and create us a nice little endless supply of smooth stone, which can also be going whilst our sorting system's running, but it doesn't end there. We've got also a just a low tech basalt generator, which has also got some hopper mine carts underneath that pick up some of this. This one definitely isn't lossless and I probably will need to relook at this entire machine at some point and just make it better. So any ideas, any good designs that are quite small in footprint, hey, if you can let me know in the comments, I'd be most appreciated. But yeah, all of that then feeds down into here. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed, make sure you hit that like button. Hit Hello there and welcome back to AD Craft. Today we're going to be expanding on our fantastic steampunk town with a bridge over the canal to a new area. But first, because mainly I'm a crazy person, I'm in front of our massive warehouse that goes over three stories that we built last episode. And as you can see here, I've set myself up a beacon. The reason for this is that I, as I said, aforementioned crazy person, decided that I don't have enough storage in this, even though it's got, I think it's a hundred plus sorters that go over these three levels. Now, the other thing that I realized is that these brilliant conveyor belts that go into the ground don't actually go anywhere at the moment. And I'm not particularly happy with that. I would like to tie this all together. So the real way that I can do this is to dig down to add some more storage underneath and that will also have the benefit of meaning that we can tie into this outlet pipe and actually just bring the full story of this warehouse together and make sure that all of the bits tie together and give me some more bulk storage particularly for the things that i'll need like cobble and smooth stone where i'm going to need loads and loads and all of the terracotta from chipping away at this mesa so now i am going to get building and specifically i'm going to dig down and start mining away underneath two and a half pickaxes worth of mining later and loads of resources and i've got myself a massive hole directly beneath our warehouse as you can see here it connects up to the sewage tunnel that goes through that way so this will come in and be also integrated into the build and the two conveyor belts that go upstairs as well those are going to come out and also connect to some stuff and this gives us loads and loads more space to have first of all just some normal uh, storage areas so we've got the two layers of the normal sorting system and over here is where I'm going to have the mass storage so going to be automatic sorting again but six double chests high for things like the stone which should should solve the problem that I've got so combined with upstairs that is going to be a huge amount of storage and should give us everything that we need for now so the next thing on the agenda is to take this material upstairs 
combine it with the things that I've already got and start crafting the stuff to actually build this because there's a lot of blocks that are going to go into this even just the floor and the ceiling and the walls just so many blocks so there's going to be a lot of crafting and a lot of building but if we go like this and we are complete with the build and I honestly wish it only took that long because this has taken me an absolute age to finish so we've got loads and loads more storage coming in on the top and then we've got here the real big storage bins for the stuff where I get loads of it like the cobblestone and the smooth stone and we've tied in now which I'm much more happy with all of the different elements so we've got the two conveyor belts one coming through down here connecting to this huge one that runs the length of the build the other one connecting into this machine down here and this machine as well connects us through if we go through here so this machine there's the other conveyor belt as you can see so we can just drop straight in from the outside brings us to the waste outlet so we can actually head through here and just come straight into this level as well so if we head back in through this way we can just run through this pipe and it brings us back out into the bottom level of our storage system and we've got various different other details like some of the slime some of the honey block crates here and this which is based on an average tuna sandwich video um, inspired by that i've obviously put my own spin on it using the copper blocks and the lightning rods uh, to build this really really funky steampunk looking machine and this kind of this tank air tank or fuel tank or something and what we have here so many people in the comments were saying that i should be using all of those eggs that I managed to acquire for decoration. So here we have some eggs powering some of the machinery itself. So really, really happy with how this has gone. Love how it ties all of the various different bits together to make it a bit more functional and love some of the little decorative touches. But most of all, I love how much storage this is going to give me. Although I do now have to put all of the filters in this new section and start trying to work out what on earth is going to go where. So wish me luck. 2,000 years later. Everything is now in place. So I've sorted all of the high volume items into here and brought over things from the farm as well. All of this terracotta that I've dug out, the, the particularly high volume ones there. And of course, I've been running the cobblestone generator to get loads and loads of cobble to fill up these chests and the smooth stone as well. So got good supplies of pretty much everything that I'll need for all of the new projects. Everything is now in here and I've kind of fixed and sorted out the filters. So I've put the things that I've got the most of in the big chests here and then put things that I've got fewer stuff on the barrels further up. I've also added myself beds on each of the levels and done all of the manual sorting to bring the things that I just really don't have room to put into the automatic sorting system. Alongside that, I have put a bubble column as well that goes all the way from the bottom to the very top. And when this comes out here, right at the top, it also has a nice drop right the way down. So I can get between the levels pretty quickly. So the next thing that I am going to do is another farm. I need some more resources. Most specifically, I need some bones and I need some coal. And alongside those, you get wither skulls as well. So that is going to be the next project, which will involve finding a different nether fortress because this one's just not going to do. It would take so, so much spawn proofing to actually get this one into some kind of a scale that I can use. And the one down there, again, just particularly wasn't very good. So I'm going to be exploring for a bit and looking for a suitable nether fortress, preferably one that's in a soul sand valley or a warped forest. So directly after this clip, I went to get myself a drink and I learned very, very quickly why you do not go AFK in the nether. So looking around the local warped forests, I found that this little gem and it appears to be with, aside from that little bit sticking out here, that the entirety of this fortress is embedded in this rock. And that is brilliant news because it means that this is just solid 
and there are no spawning spaces in it so the spawn proofing is going to be an absolute minimum i keep coming around the corner and finding like loads and loads of blazes and various other mobs so i'll do a bit more exploring to make sure this is suitable and then find a cross section where i want to start building and get on with excavating some space well that's a welcome surprise i've now explored the entire fortress and lit up quite a lot of it and I've also dug my way up from the fortress, which is down there at the bottom, up here to bedrock and got myself some more of the level 127, as we can look here on the right, blocks of bedrock. So I am going to be clambering up onto the roof and breaking this block right here so that we can connect this up for easy transportation from our main nether area. Now that hole is blown in the ceiling and I've connected things up with some ladders. I have found myself the perfect spot in this nether fortress to center the farm on. So this gives us the minimum amount outside a warped forest that we're gonna have to spawn proof. However, that is gonna be the next task, taking all of these pressure plates that we've got here and potentially some more that I'm gonna have to head back to the base for and completely covering this place in these pressure plates to spawn proof the interior. This is going to take quite some time. And after what seems like forever, I am finally done. And this bit here that sits just outside the fortress, which is just hidden away behind that warped forest, probably has taken as long as the entire of the fortress itself. Though on the plus side, it did mean whilst I was doing this, I was able to catch one of these guys in a boat. So I've got one of the guys with the sword. I'm going to need him to attract the wither skeletons there. So all I need to do is when I'm ready, come back here, break the boat, take off my helmet and get him to chase me quite a long way through this. But yeah, I have used so, so much iron. It is a really, really good job that I have been stockpiling this stuff pretty much since the start of the season. Um, because I definitely need to replenish my stocks after this, but a lot of these have been placed and I probably missed some gaps, How, like this one just up here, for example. Um, but yeah, this, this'll do, this'll do. There's so, so much going on here, like you can see down there. Oh, this is hours and hours work. Definitely will be worth it though in the long run, but now I am tired. Whilst digging out the space for the farm, I have an unexpected surprise. My first ancient debris. So this, I'll have a look around, see if there's any more. Probably isn't. Um, yeah, first piece. But that does remind me later on, I might go looking for some more ancient debris so that I can get all of my gear netherite and so that I won't drop it in lava and it'll burn up again because that was really annoying. It took an absolute age to get the stuff back. And there we have our piglin captured in place. Now all I need to do is to block him in here with this trapdoor. And now he is in there forever. And the last thing to do now that I've grabbed my anvil is to name this guy so he doesn't despawn. And this guy is going to be forever with a bait. So you are now stuck there, Mr. Witherbait, and you can't go anywhere. That won't let you out. And now I've just got to clean up this area. I have put my helmet back on. So yeah, clean up this area and finish by putting the carpets out here to create the spawning locations. So now we have finished the farm. And as you can see by these wither skeletons, this is pumping them through into the underground. So that one should get knocked down any second. And then we've got some more. I am blocking the spawns from this side, so it's not working at full efficiency. But if we head down here, then we'll see what I've done with the area at the bottom of the farm where we can collect things. I have done a little bit of decoration down here, found a natural vein of the magma blocks. 
so I've just built those in here and used plenty of light and these are slabs and what we find is that goes a bit random uh, but the rest of them will come down here and then they will be ready for a swipe of the sword with all of the output going into these chests down here and I've been doing some AFKing for about probably a couple of hours maybe a little bit longer and the results are down here so get rid of that flash get rid of those swords what we've got here is more than a stack of wither skulls and loads and loads of bones and coal so this is absolutely perfect for what i need there's probably some stuff in the side ones as well another wither skull there and yes yeah, some more stuff down this side so really happy with how this has worked out i am going to clean out this and take it back to our main base then probably come back and do a little bit of afk and then i need to think about getting some more beacons from some of these skulls i thought it would be worth showing you the scale in the end of some of the spawn proofing that i had to do which was so so many pressure plates i worked out that i hadn't gone far enough so i've had to go back several times and work out where there were gaps but i'm so glad that it's done and that it's working but that was a grind now that i'm back i have a lot of landscaping to do in order to clear some space for the next builds into the steampunk area now i am absolutely sick of my diamond pickaxe constantly running out and also the shovel as well so there's a couple of things i need to do firstly i need to take this box and go and blast some holes in the nether to find myself using some of these fire resist potions as well some more of the ancient debris so i can get myself some netherite tools and netherite armor once i've done that i can take some of my skulls and i can go to the end and cheese some withers to make sure i've got plenty of beacons but first of all the nether just around the corner from the portal i have found a nice space and dug down to 14 which i've always found is the best place for blasting because it's mostly uh, just beneath all of the lava lakes so you don't get quite as much lava as you would otherwise. So now I need to make a little space so that I can actually have a staging area and dig out a whole bunch of tunnels that I'm then going to blow up. After all of that, my nether now looks like Swiss cheese. There are blast holes absolutely everywhere going in all directions. Just any places where I found a nice long section that didn't have much lava in it. So this one, for example, I cleared out a lot of the lava and yeah, have just gone through and used up all that TNT plus a bunch more that I went and crafted. But on the plus side, I have come out with 49 ancient debris. So this should be perfect for what we need, which is going to be mainly making our tools into netherite because it's put a significant dent in the durability of my pickaxe just by doing some netherrack mining. So I'm going to take all of these, the materials that I just dumped off here, back to the base and get my kit upgraded. In the end here, under the end portal, I have marked out 0, 0, which is the one directly under the middle. And then by backing away here and placing our T of soul sand, and some of our wither skulls we can generate a wither and once he's charged up i can take this here smite five sword and this will make very very swift work of him as he will get trapped in this portal and we can cheese him to our heart's content even though he's a bit loud and get ourselves another nether star and then in no time another star and a wither skull and now just to do that several more times well all of those beacons have now been put to good use so as you can see from the top of my screen i've got a whole bunch of new effects i've also activated the beacon that i had underneath there and put one over there embedded in the in the actual walkway itself so that these can be switched on and off at will and those are just going to give me speed so when i move around this area I'm going to go a bit faster and I've put a quad beacon over there as well to help me with the next step which is going to be clearing all of this. So wish me luck. The next area is now cleared and ready to be paved and also ready to be connected up to the other area across the canal as I'm going to have a bridge just over my shoulder there. 
there's going to be a lot of resources that are going to go into this first of all in paving it and building the road and then building these workshops but luckily it's just a very very short jaunt for me to go to my storage system and pick up whatever i need so i'm going to do a little bit of resource gathering now and then i'm going to start building the first stage of this upgrade is now complete and as you can see flexing a little bit with the wither skulls on top of this bridge but they make an absolutely fast fantastic uh, little addition in terms of decoration if we head down here we've opened up this section so we can see across and at the moment I've got some doors that don't go anywhere but in the future if you've got any ideas on what you think these should lead to underneath then let me know we've got this little slipway as well that's gonna allow us out of the canal if we go in there through to the new area and these are now completely ready for the builds and that is going to be the next thing right after I go to sleep. All of the decoration on this area and the interiors are now complete so I can show you what's going on whilst all of the items that were left over are sorted through my sorting system. I love having that round here. But the first thing to note is we've got these big boilers a couple around the side so that it looks good when we're coming through the base and these have got some soul fires burning inside them on some soul soil. I really like how that gives some nice uh, effects going out of the top. And these also have some highly functional cogs that are connected up to this, the main machine here, which is an automated sugarcane farm. It's not the biggest, but it will give some passive sugarcane as it does push those off when they grow to a certain size. And if I need some extra raw stuff getting caught up, I have got a hopper mine cart that can go around and pick things up. And this is, of course, two layers as well. The other passive farm that I have going on here is this teeny tiny, but quite effective little cactus farm so when the cactus grows it can't grow against the block so it pops off and hopefully doesn't get killed on the cactus itself but drops in here and we also then have this machine which i really like oh fall in the hole uh, with again some more of the soul fire and some anvils going along here that looks a bit like a conveyor belt going into this machine so the first wor workshop really like how this one's turned out and then a very different look with these very industrial massive pipes going into this second one but this also has a function so if we come in here we have got a melon and pumpkin farm and this one here is an ill mango design which i will put in the description alongside the logical geek boy with a skeleton farm and this has been doing some significant work just popping off all of the melons and pumpkins as they grow i've put loads of barrels in here because i'm pretty sure that these are eventually throughout the course of the different episodes going to be filled up with melons and pumpkins because this hasn't been going for that long but it has pumped out quite a lot of these which will be very useful once we get the villagers set up over here so aside from that coming down the side we have another one of these vans this one this time is holding some of the wool from the wool farm and taking that away to be sold somewhere else in the steampunk town We've got various different stacks of things because again we are still technically on the dock side i've gone to another layer here because i want to start stepping things back and adding a bit of height vertically into these builds because we've got this big hill i've got some ideas of what i'm going to do here but equally if you've got any ideas and things that you'd like to see in this town let me know in the comments and here finally we've got this machine again with a big boiler and going into this and with some cables going into the ground i love this effect with the smoker just the top of that and the way that the chains look like they're disappearing into the hole but yeah really really pleased with how this looks i think that this steampunk area is really coming together now and i'm super pleased with how this is going so i hope you've enjoyed the video if you have let me know hello there and welcome back to adcraft i'm starting out today in the steampunk town area where last episode i built these fantastic workshops later on i'll be expanding the dock area with a brilliant new boathouse build which will also contain some very special things but first as you can see from my f3 screen here i've now updated to 1.19 and that means there's lots of new things for me to get my hands on most importantly i need to get hold of swift sneak which means i need to raid an ancient city 
and hope that I don't have any nasty encounters with the warden on the way. But before all of that, I want to get myself some mangrove wood, which means finding a mangrove swamp. I also want some mud, some propagules and some tadpoles. So it's time to head out exploring. So having headed out due west, this is a direction I've not really been in, I've only needed to come about 1200-ish blocks and we have here a fantastic mangrove swamp. So let's, oh, this is actually quite a big swamp. In fact, it's absolutely huge. So this will give an awful lot of mangrove wood and I really won't feel too bad about deforesting it. So now I've got to find a nice place to set down, probably over by that village, and then start doing some chopping. After loads and loads of chopping and oh so much hoeing, I finally managed to get what I wanted, which was an entire shulker box of mangrove logs. And I've also got myself two shulker boxes full of mud, along with various other things as well. So these trees have so many leaves. There's quite a lot of wood in the big ones, but trying to get to that wood just means that you need a lot of hoeing to actually get there. So I've got a couple of leaves and then some various other things like the roots, some of the muddy roots and just a little bit more wood here as well. Uh, but the next thing I need to consider is finding some frogs. I think there's one just down over there getting some of these bread and trying to catch myself some tadpoles that I can take with me because I'm not going to grow them up here. I'm going to find a nice place that goes from hot to cold to moderate and then just make myself a, a little farm that I can AFK at where they can all grow up at some point. Not sure if I'm going to do that this episode or not, but I do need to take these slime balls that I've brought with me and go and start breeding some. So I found some frogs now and I'm just waiting for them to actually lay some frog spawn. So let's get through here. If I use the right tool, that would help. So yeah, let's just find out where these guys are going to be laying their eggs because I don't quite know where they're going. So one of these frogs has finally put down some frog spawn and now it's the waiting game for these to turn into some tadpoles. And there's some more over here as well. Fantastic. And after one night, uh, we've got some tadpoles. So let me get some water and ta-da. There we go. Bucket, bucket. One, two, and three of these guys to start with. And hopefully these two sets of frog spawn here will hatch soon as well. And then I can get myself a decent number. There's still some frog spawn to turn into tadpoles over there, but I've been waiting for some time and I've managed to get myself an entire shulker box full of tadpoles, plus a bunch more, plus there seems to be a frog just hiding down there. Uh, but yeah, I think I have enough now. I mean, I've got like 30 some ink. That's, to be honest, more than enough. And I can breed some more up wherever I want now. So I'm going to take these back to the base. One other thing that I noticed around here is there's some really, really cool terrain. So you've got this bit here that you can sort of fly through and round and not kill yourself, obviously. Uh, but yeah, just this nice little archway that goes over the top of this jungle section. So yeah, there's some really, really cool stuff around this area. One other thing that I have done around here is set myself up another portal and connected this up to the roof of the nether. So now when we come through, we can see that we are not far at all. And I've used some, some clever arrows here to show where we are. And yeah, we're not far at all from what is going to be our nether hub. The one other thing that I've done over here is I have added a second lot of chests. So half of these hoppers now feed down into this side. So when I was AFKing before, I was losing loads of resources. Now I can AFK for much longer and get as much gold as I want. Back in the storage building now, I have added in all of the mangrove wood. And if I take one of my little shortcuts down in between levels here, you can also see that I've added the other different things that we picked up at the mangrove swamp. So we've got the mud, the packed mud, I believe that is, and the mud bricks here. And I've been crafting up some of these because I'm going to be needing some of these later on. So yeah, it did mean that I needed to reorder things, which was a bit of a pain, but it's done now. I've also created myself in here three boxes of logs with just a good chunk of each of the different types of wood. 
So we've got nine stacks for each of these that I can carry around in case I need them. And that will be the first stage in me organizing my ender chest properly again. But next on the agenda, I need to get myself swift sneak, which means I need to find myself an ancient city. And there's one thing that is going to be essential for doing this. And that is over here. If we come back in to the wool farm. So I need to get some wool from here. I don't know what, but let's use some pink. Let's see how much pink we've got. Plenty of pink. I'm going to take loads of this wool because obviously the wool stops the uh, the sound vibrations and will mean that I will be less likely to have any run-ins with the warden. I'm also going to make myself some speed potions just so I can get away if I need to. But yeah, I'm going to pack up a bunch of this wool and then start the exploration because I'm pretty sure that I'm going to have to go a long old way to find one of these ancient cities. In the spirit of a Minecraft and not getting distracted, I have gone and now connected up all of the things to the roof of the nether. So I've taken out all of the portals that were down beneath. And so this one takes us to the village. Over here, I've added one that takes us to the Guardian Farm. There we've got our mangrove. Over this way, as we know, we've got our Wither Skeleton Farm. And then round this corner, we have the two portals that take us to the steampunk area. So one down to the storage and that one down to the super smelter. And just over in the distance there, I've added our one that takes us to the fortress, uh, the stronghold rather, to get to the end. So everything is now connected up here and this should make traveling back and forth significantly easier. Even though this is in a little bit of an awkward position because it's directly behind where we've put our storage. But yeah, at some point I will be building another hub. But as, at the moment, I've got to get back to the storage and finish picking up all the things that I'll need for this journey. So I've now prepared everything that I need to take me on an adventure to find myself an ancient city. Now I've got loads and loads of rockets in reserve. I've got lots of food. I've got loads of wool. I've got some potions of night vision and speed. And in case of emergency, I've also got the stuff that I need to create a warden distractor. So if you put together a couple of observers, then you've got trapdoor flaps that'll interrupt them. But if you really want to drive it crazy and probably yourself and any server mates, if you put this on the server as well, you can just stick a bell on the side and that is just hideous. Let's get rid of that. That's that's enough of that. So what I'm probably going to do is take these and I need to find myself a nice area that I have never loaded before and start exploring that. So the idea that I have is probably to take me into the nether and whilst I'm here to actually head over towards my wither skeleton farm because that is a long long way out so if I head out this way I'll get to my wither skeleton farm I can activate the portal and see where that actually takes me in the overworld and hopefully that will be brand new terrain and I can start looking around for an ancient city or two. I've added a sign to the portal that's formed so I know which way it's going to be taking me so this if I ever find this portal will be the wither skeleton farm and this is the area that I've found here. So it's good, nice, new, fresh terrain that I've never been. Now to try and find myself some caves and see if I can actually get into an ancient city somewhere. I found myself a big hole a little bit north of where the portal came up. And this looks like it goes down quite a long way. So I'm thinking that this is probably a good place to start exploring. I've been making my way down into this hole and I can see down here that there is some skulk going on and some quite active uh, skulk sensors that seem to be setting each other off, uh, which is not ideal. Um, also, this rather interesting mine shaft, which looks pretty cool, to be honest. So I think I'm on the right route, given the amount of skulk that we have around here. And there we have it, folks, the first ancient city. Uh, but it's still quite a long way away and I need to work out how to get there past all of this skulk and without creepers and various nasty things dropping on my head. Um, yeah, not ideal, but I'm sure I'll find a way. And there's an awful lot of skeletons there as well. And just mobs in general. This is going to be fun. After a lot of jump scares from things shooting at me and dropping down from all over the place, and so, so much lighting up. 
that I actually had to go back to the surface to get more coal because even though I brought like two stacks down here it wasn't enough. I've managed to find a cave that comes through to a really really nice opening that means that we can now bridge across to the ancient city itself. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any skulk sensors or specifically the shriekers in this area that would summon the warden so I should be able to then set up a bit of a base, get prepared and get everything that I need to search through this entire ancient city which incidentally no mobs can spawn in here which is great news and get myself the swift sneak enchantment. Oh yes, other side is almost worth the trip here on its own. So we've got some Echo Shard and finally Swift Sneak 3. So I had Swift Sneak 1 that I'd picked up before, but now we have exactly what we're looking for. So anything else that we pick up now is just a bonus and there is still an awful lot to look at. I am now back where I started and as you can see from this crazy spaghetti of the wool, I've been around this so many times because I made the mistake of going around killing off all of the shriekers and picking those up where I wanted to and then going and doing the chests but then I kept going back to chests that I'd looked at before so I ended up having to put blocks above them but yeah it was done and I had a good haul of stuff but now I'm going to find my way back to the surface find my way back to the portal the nether portal to the wither skeleton farm and get back to my base and when I am back there I will show you all of the good stuff that I did get in the end. After a long old journey I am back home and I'm super glad to be here and these are the awesome things that I managed to get hold of. A whole bunch of decorative blocks including the sensors, shriekers and catalysts that I picked up whilst I was clearing out the place. Some echo shards and some disc, disc fragments. I've already crafted the disc off the back of these so I did have nine more. And then some other bits and pieces that I picked up here. And then in this box all of the swift sneaks. So I've got two swift sneak three in the end. Uh, two twos which will combine to make a third one and then just a couple of ones two enchanted golden apples that were actually in the same chest weirdly um, but that's the first two enchanted golden apples that I've got which means that I could probably use one to craft the banner pattern in fact uh, and then four copies of other side so best song in my view in Minecraft and I've now got it four times and then some other music discs so this is the one that I crafted up and then multiple multiple copies of 13 and cat and then w lots and lots of hoes as well so I don't think I will ever need another hoe particularly this one which is literally exactly the same as the hoe that I took with me there so I'm gonna put all of these things away now and then I am gonna start flattening the area for our build now it's time to get much more sneaky wow that's so much faster The next area is now cleared, ready for the build. And yeah, the only thing that I need to do here is move this beacon. I don't know where I'm going to put it yet, but I'll work somewhere out. And I've got loads more resources to go back into the storage system as well, because I had to shorten this extra height bit. And I'm going to be extending the dock out across here. But that's enough landscaping for now. In the meantime, whilst I've been putting this video together, Ian XO4 has done it again with a brand new farm, which is an automated tree farm. And yeah, I have spent a lot of time chopping wood, so I am very, very keen to get a much more automated way. And I'm going to head back over to the village area, pick out a spot and start building. This thing is now complete and it's working perfectly. So I absolutely love this. You just step up towards the chain here in the middle, aim at this block with the 
saplings in your hand and the bone meal and then you just hold down the mouse button just like that and if you press F3 and T and take your hand off the mouse it'll just repeat the actions that you were doing and this will then just keep going and the thing is because it drops the saplings those get fed up into your inventory as you're going as well and the bone meal is just coming through from the side so this as you can see is just brilliant and then just to get out of this mode i'll just hit the escape button back to the game and switch this off like so and yeah that will then just clear out anything that's still there and be ready to go in a second one will blow up there and that shows you that it's finished i've added this optional extra bit as well to feed me through the bone meal so i can just stock this up on bone meal and go to my heart's content and that has just been pumping out the logs and birch is not a nice type of log to get hold of anyway so this is amazing definitely definitely check it out if you need a tree farm i'll put the link in the description as always and just like that less than 10 minutes later i've got nearly 10 stacks of birch and a bunch of warp stem with some shroom light as a bonus as well so this thing is crazy and i'm super pleased with it I'm back over at the steampunk area now and I've moved the beacons ready to go and also spent an absolute age collecting all of the resources that I'm going to need for this next build. So now it's time lapse time. And the boathouse and decoration is now complete with loads and loads of new things around this, including bringing in the mangrove wood because this is just such a lovely texture here and some on the bottom of the boat. And that's one of my favorite things as well. These little grindstones as the wheels so you can imagine it being pushed up and down this slipway back into the dock. And also my favorite thing is probably these doors on the angle. I absolutely love how these have come out uh, just so that this could be closed up in the night. And if we go inside where it'll be safe from the darkness, we can come up here and see some of the decorations. And we've got the boat here, first of all, with this big machine. And then we've got the steering wheel here. Obviously, you'd need some help because, I mean, you can't actually see off the boat, but don't tell anybody about that. Um, come up here and there's also a little interior on this boat as well so if you come down here the machine is here being powered by the turt legs again there's a little bed down here which i'm actually going to sleep in and it just pops you back out on the deck here so that's good uh, we've got a little office area here but this like all of the other buildings is functional and these three things are what gives this building its main function so what we have over here is a clay farm so we can take our mud and using the dripstone it will suck the water out and then once that's all been sucked out then you've got your clay blocks as a renewable source in order to create the clay blocks themselves i've got this El Mango machine and with its special shovel here if we grab some dirt from just down here put that in our offhand and come and stand here and go like this we can just create some mud the timings aren't quite right on it it seems to be pumping out quite a lot of bottles and sometimes it misses the mud so i'll have to look into that but it does the trick it does give quite a good amount of mud there and you just can pick up the the dirt that's left over from there and restock it also gives you a few bottles i don't know quite why those are coming out but i can just reuse those of course the last thing in here is this farm, which is a micro wheat farm. So if I grab some of the seeds and put those in my hand, just like so, we can start this machine. And then as soon as we get the right place, there we go. Just this micro farm using quite a bit of bone meal, but we'll pump out these wheat and the seeds. And it's just, yeah, a great way for us to get the wheat that we'll need to create the mud blocks, which I've also used on the corners here. So overall, I'm super pleased with how this has all turned out. 
Uh, I hope you are too. If you like it, let me know in the comments. If you've got any ideas of what other things that you'd like to see in this steampunk area, also let me know. Hello there and welcome back to Adicraft. This episode I'm taking on the biggest project yet and building into the cliffs at the side of the base. This is going to take so much terraforming and so many blocks, with just the planning alone for this building taking well over a week. Can I pull it off in survival? Stick around to find out. Whilst you do, hit that like button and let's see if we can hit 150 likes for this episode. But first, I need to make some upgrades to my wither skeleton farm, so I'm going to need a lot of bone mill for wood and for the mud bricks for this build. Rather than using pressure plates to cover up the warped forest section where I keep getting endermen spawning around the farm, I am going to collect myself a whole bunch of lava and pretty much just dump that all over the forest itself. So I now need to find as many of these patches and head to the nether and start collecting all of this lava up. The next stage in the plan is to get hold of a whole bunch of wither roses and it is Ian XO4 to the rescue again with this incredibly simple but massively effective wither rose farm. It just uses the mechanics with the wither under here so if we pop that in and we head down here the wither will explode in a second and all we need to do is literally place ourselves some snow blocks down here and we will create a whole bunch of the snow golems which will then die to the wither giving us the wither roses and we also recycle these pumpkins so i'll put the link down in the description and this is just amazing and when you're done you just kill off the wither or you can just exit the area and the wither will stay here trapped in the bedrock And now, a long, long time later, with literally hundreds of strategically placed buckets of lava dotted throughout all of this warped forest area to block as many Enderman spawns as possible. And all of the slabs have now been replaced by Netherrack with all of the lovely Wither Roses on. So only Wither Skeletons can now spawn in this space. I now have absolutely loads of Wither Skeletons dropping down here, ready to be killed off. And that is giving me so many bones, so much coal, which are the two main things that I now need. I've also remodeled this area a little bit because this spot that I was standing on before to kill these guys off is actually a little bit too close to activate the majority of the spawning spaces. So by digging down here, opening this out and by putting some th quality of life things in like a fire to get rid of all of the swords in. Now, as you can see by standing down here, there are loads and loads of wither skeletons that drop down here. And within no time, this fills up and they should probably start dying off soon due to entity cramming. So I best go and give them a stab. And yeah, this is now working so much better than it was before. And I'm really, really pleased, even though it was a load of extra work with how this is now finished out. And this can give me all of those vital resources like the bones and the coal that I'll need. With the resources from the Wither Skeleton Farm running through the sorting system, it is now time to start the huge job of clearing out more of this area ready for the next build. Well, that took two and a half pickaxes of digging and many hours to actually clear the area but now this is pretty much ready and a blank canvas for the next area of the steampunk town. I now have to take all the resources back and get them into the storage system first of all and then I need a bit of a break from this and there's something else that I want to get hold of and that is some totems of undying because I haven't had any so far this season haven't actually faced a raid at all even though I keep getting pillagers around this area so I'm going to use that fact to my benefit I am going to go back to the village area and using ENXO4's Minecraft Elegance Instant AFK Raid Farm, I am going to get building with another farm to give me emeralds and a whole bunch of other materials. I've now finished the build and this guy is happily sitting here at the bottom, ready to be my village to summon as many raids as I want. 
I've also added the outline of a nether portal here so I can connect this up from the nether roof and I've taken the coordinates for this because I realized that if I do accidentally go over my village here that's going to start the raid over there so I'm going to connect this through the nether to the pillager outpost which should just be that direction somewhere so now i've got to go out and add another nether portal at the villager at the pillager outpost rather and connect them up through the nether so i've got bad omen now from this pillager outpost and i've set up a nether portal ready to go from this place so this should all be fine i now need to head straight back to the raid farm and make sure that I don't go over my village so that I can test it out. And that is the first raid now set off. So I just need to head up here now and wait for this to spawn. There we have the raid and that has now spawned. So now what we do is we just head through here. These guys fall through and then you just swipe away at them just like this, making sure that you can kill off all the guys with the vexes and this will be great. So I'm back at the pillager outpost and I've just got myself some bad omen. I've been trying to clean things up a little bit because there's this big ravine in here. But now I've got the bad omen, I can show you that we've connected up this outpost through to bring us out on the ne nether roof over here. And just over there, if we fly over, we have our raid farm. So it should mean that traveling between the two is now significantly easier. And if I just come in through here and that immediately starts a raid. So we can then just head up here. And once we get up there, we can see that they've all spawned. And then we flick the lever again to turn off all the water and cycle through with another round of bad omen. After maybe just over an hour of running raids and coming back down and cycling that through, I now have a full shulker box full of totems of undying and this shulker box here with some saddles to take back to the base. Uh, but of course that's not all, I've also got this double chest and a whole bunch of totems that I've just had to throw away. And also loads and loads of saddles here as well. But the main thing that I did do this for was in this chest here, the emeralds. I need lots of these to do some trading with my villagers at my villager trading area for things like the bricks that I'll need and the other stuff. So it's nice to get some other little bonuses because this isn't a stacking raid farm. It's not mainly for these things. It's mainly for the emeralds that I'm doing this. So this is an absolutely brilliant, really, really simple farm by Ian XO. For, and I will of course pop the details and the link in the description. I've got a whole bunch of resources ready now in here and it is time for me to start a bit of a time lapse going through setting the groundwork for the next stage of the builds. And now, story time. So, in real life, it's about two weeks or so, just over probably, since I filmed that last set of clips of building the cliff road and the detailing on there. And I have been on a bit of a journey. Unfortunately, not the good kind. Shortly after recording those clips of the cliffside, I was due to go into hospital for a very, very simple procedure. Unfortunately, things didn't go quite as planned because whilst I was in there, I had a very severe allergic reaction to one of the drugs that they gave me. And that caused me to go into anaphylaxis, which is basically when your body severely rejects what is inside it and it causes all manner of things to go wrong. So as a result of that, I had to be rushed to the intensive care unit, was there for about eight hours whilst they tried to make sure that everything was better, everything 
everything was sorted and then was taken into hospital for a little while for observation as well. Uh, good news is it's not something that they gave me that you would come into contact with on a day-to-day -day basis, so not something I really need to avoid, but we'll know about next time I go into hospital for anything in particular. And yeah, it definitely took it out of me. Um, it was a big, big shock to the system and it's just taken me a little while to recover and get my energy levels back. But on the plus side, I am feeling much better now. So I have had that chance to recover and I'm back at it and looking forward to getting to the next stage of the build. So now back over to the cliffside area to start with some of the buildings. And I'm really pleased with how this area has come together so far, but of course it's not finished. So we actually have three full builds that we're gonna be putting into these spaces. But now I need to go back to the storage system and start putting together all of those resources that I'm gonna need for these builds. I've managed to make a bit of an error, as you can see from the top of my screen. There's so many patrols that seem to spawn over by the steampunk area that I killed a patrol captain and forgot that I had the bad omen effect, even though I was doing other stuff for goodness knows how long, and then came back to the village to trade for some bricks over here. And yeah, managed to spawn a raid, which was very, very bad news here. Um, I killed all of the first wave and managed to capture this guy down here. And as you can also see, I've started using the fresh animations texture pack, which just gives so much more life to the mobs that you get in the game. You can see from the uh, zombie up here, they've all got different movements and different animations. Uh, but the downside for this raid was that I've managed to lose a few villagers to the raid itself, which is not ideal in any way, shape or form. I think this guy was efficiency. I'll need to need to check. Uh, these guys should be absolutely fine to replace. They didn't have anything particularly special. I just used them for the iron trades in order to get the emeralds. But with the raid farm, that's less necessary. The one that I am going to miss, though, is this guy here. He was a Fletcher and he was the guy who traded Arrows of Weakness, which was absolutely perfect for zombifying and bringing these guys back. So one thing that I'm going to have to do is make this a lot more secure. At some point, I need to move this over to the steampunk area anyway. That will probably accelerate the whole thing. And yeah, at the moment, these guys don't seem to be breeding. So I need to get them some more carrots as well. But now on with the trading. And with all of the materials collected, it's time for some building. Before I start on the third major building over there, let's have a look at these. So this first one has got a really, really chunky looking chimney here. We've got some of the pipes going in and we can head across. And there's just another machine on top there, providing some steam power. And if we go inside, you might be able to notice something through the window. Again, we've got a purpose for this. And this is my lava factory. So we've just got eight buckets of lava here going through this dripstone. I've got myself some buckets here. Whenever one of these fills up, I can just go like this and plonk it in here. So this now gives me an, a full source. And that one's filled up again already. Don't want to miss out on that. Uh, this gives me an infinite source of lava. So I will at some point probably fill in my super smelter with buckets of lava because that'll just keep it going forever. But yeah, this will just be going off in the background. And there's we've got some nice soul fire burning in there as well. So the next building we have is in the cliff itself. So I've decided to go for a bit of a diagonal build, the first, but won't be the last by any means. And this is using some of the new mechanics from the 1.19 update. So one of the things that I really love is the fact that you can waterlog leaves. So we've got some roots and some leaves that are waterlogged throughout this. And the main purpose of this is that this is my nether wart farm. So you'll see that we've got some of these hoppers going around the edge. And of course, because the soul sand isn't a full block, we've got some hoppers underneath there. So that'll just pick things up. And when this is done, you just plonk that button. It will just wash everything through. Everything comes down into here and you can just replant to your heart's content. So this again is going to be really, really useful. Just passively working away in the background 
as well. This is as automated as you can get nether wart farms, unfortunately. But hopefully one day they'll be able to replant themselves or get some villagers to actually plant the nether wart. The other thing that we've got in here is just this little unit just showing off some of the other nether plants. So this is kind of a, a botanically type factory. But again, with some skulk and some various other things thrown in for good measure. And I'm really, really happy with how this area is starting to come together with all of the different builds and bringing the whole thing to life. And I've also been making some quality of life improvements on the builds that have already been here, like this elytra hole in the side of the storage system that brings me straight in on the level of the sorter. So I can dump all the stuff in there and just fly off to do something else. And it's another quality of life improvement that I'm looking to do now. So during the course of these builds, I've been using a lot of my reserves of copper. Uh, there's loads and loads in these pipes. There's quite a bit even in here and various different bits and pieces all over. And I need a better way of aging the copper up without having to go all the way back over to the village. So my solution is to use some of these little holes or this one in particular. I'm going to carve out into this cliff and give myself a big space in order to lay out the copper and then start actually farming that. Whilst I'm around here, it can quite happily be aging away and I can just pick that up. But I'm also a bit fed up of picking it up just normally. So I've been doing a bit of thinking and I've come up with a bit of a solution to that. And that is going to need us to head over to my testing world. And over here, you will see this monstrosity that is probably more of a proof of concept than anything. But what I have done is I have created a system for picking up all of the copper once it has aged and bringing it to a single location in order to be able to then mine it as easily as possible. So at the touch of a button, well, I haven't connected up both of the buttons yet, but at the touch of two buttons at present, this will First of all, if I click this, push up all of the copper. So this is going to be floor level. So it's going to push it up into the air. I've got a whole bunch of flying machines that then are going to come over and collect the copper into uh, basically eight long lines. So there's an entire stack of copper that this will do. So this will be eight lots of eight, which will bring it all the way over here. And once it's brought it all the way over here, it'll stop just at the end. And then I've got some more monstrous flying machines here once that's done i can press the second button and this will all be connected and timed and the second stage then brings all of this stuff in brings the two sides of copper together that one's broken oh no it's just some lag and then it pushes the copper down there and those flying machines go all the way back to their bays and i've then got this copper here that i can just go do 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 and mine out and so I can make myself a little space and keep collecting the copper until I actually need it and then mine it all in one go. So yeah, this is kind of what I'm looking to do. Had to learn a fair bit about flying machines to make sure that this would work, particularly these ones, which are as small as possible um, because they need to push eight full blocks there. Um, so yeah, really pleased with how these have gone and the return stations and all sorts of stuff. I'm going to change these. I just used crying obsidian because why not, even though it's a bit painful on the eyes. But now I've got this concept. I know roughly the space that I'm going to need to dig out. And so I can start clearing this and start thinking about building this back in the steampunk area. The digging is now complete and that took an age as well as going through four full netherite picks. I went through all three of these once and yeah, I've done another one in as well. So that needs repairing. Uh, I've also got all of these resources, so loads of stone and all of these chests are pretty much full as well. Um, yeah, so that's going to keep me going for quite some time. Now I need to start thinking about laying out the redstone. This area is definitely a bigger area than I expected because it's even, if we come over this way, come out a little bit on this side. So I had to fill in some extra blocks around here where it's coming out into this area. And I'm really looking forward to building in this area because it's really, really cool, just this big bowl here. And I also needed to put myself a couple of beacons on the other side. So the Wither Skeleton Farm is very much paying for itself. But now I need to head back in 
to the storage area and get all of the redstone that I'm going to need to actually start building this. I've now done the most important part of any redstone build and that is the laying of the wall to put the redstone on because let's face it I'm not going to just put it on the stone here. I've colour coded all of the different lines so that if I do dig anything up by accident because all of this is going to be under the floor bear in mind that I know what to fix because the last thing I want is the flying machines to start breaking on me and having to keep fixing those. So that's all done. I now need to smelt a whole bunch of glazed terracotta so that I can cover up the return stations and that the flying machines won't stick to them. I also need a bunch of obsidian. But the next thing that you're gonna see is once I've put all of the redstone in place. Now that that's used a good chunk of my redstone resources, I'm gonna need to do some serious trading with some villagers, uh, some clerics to get the redstone back particularly because just loads of it's gone into this it's now done and if we give it a quick test i've just used some of the terracotta that i mined out so it's easy to see we head over here i have run this but not with any blocks in so this could still go absolutely terribly terribly wrong hopefully i've got the timings right and just as it gets to the end here this redstone line should fire off about now fantastic timing's pretty good there head across now and this should all come to the middle these go a bit crazy and push down loads of times no idea why they're doing that i think it's something to do with how i've actually got the redstone if we just have a quick look up there uh, how i've got the redstone going across i know i could use loads of observers and just have the observers with the repeaters here but I was trying to save myself a few resources at least uh, but it still works even if it does go a bit crazy and here we've got now our nice mineable slab so I can then just chunk through this with that being copper in the future or using this as a stopper get myself three layers of it and actually just mine it all away leave it all here just run it each time the copper has aged so I'm really really pleased with that and yeah, that is going to be enough on this particular project now because I still need to design what I want the interior of this to look like. Haven't decided whether I'm going to have full blocks here or or slabs uh, in between. Um, we'll we'll see. I think probably full blocks so I can just run across without actually getting bumped or changing height. So now though, I need to take all of these resources back to the storage system get those put away and pull out the resources for the last build in this area and the last build for this episode over here and get that put in place As we come past the sugarcane farm you can see the new build is complete and I've worked very hard on the sight lines for this to make sure that this is the thing that pops out just as you come around the corner and it gives some brilliant views and ties in the cliff there particularly with these big pipes as well so I'm super pleased with how this has gone I haven't got an interior for it yet I'm still working on that but if you've got any ideas please do let me know in the comments if you've enjoyed the video please do let me know as well Hello there and welcome to Adicraft. Today I'm going to be making some more huge additions to the steampunk base with crazy new builds, more terraforming and an incredible discovery later on. You guys smashed the total of 150 likes for the last episode so let's see if we can do it again this time. So settle in, hit that like button and let's get going for more of AD's adventure. First things first, I need to put an interior on this temple that I built in the last episode. But as with all of the builds around here, I want it to have a specific purpose. And I think I know just the thing. But let me know, based on how this looks, what you think this is going to be with your guesses in the comments. I can let you into one little clue. It is going to require some excavation to give me a bit more space behind here. So now I'm going to get digging. That's now all cleared out and this comes right the way through and there is a hole if I drop down here 
this is the main area that I've excavated out. It didn't take as long as I thought. And this is going to be where the, the magic is going to happen. There's going to be a nice design in the back of this as well, which has meant I've had to make this completely janky ladder situation going up here, but it just about works. So the first thing I'm going to do is put the basic walls and floor in place, and then I'll let you know what I'm going to put inside. And the first step of the decoration is now done, including a drop chute and a bubble elevator, so I don't need to use any more janky ladders. This is going to be a villager breeder up here. So well done for anybody in the comments who said that. I am going to get this design, the same one as I've got over there, but with a different collection system that's going to run through, pick up the villagers, take them all the way down here, drop them through this hole, and there's going to be a zombie right in front of them to turn them immediately into a zombie villager. With this being a temple, I couldn't have anything but the first set of villagers in here being clerics. So I'm going to have a bank of clerics on each side to give me all of the redstone that I want. I've got a slightly trickier job now, though, of getting a villager or two. Well, needing at least two. And there is a village just the other side of that industrial area if we fly up here. And there are a couple of villagers that I have trapped in in the past in this area. So we can go and get those and bring them back. I also need to get myself a husk or a zombie from somewhere around here. Or maybe even in the dark area behind here. I'll take all the torches out and see if I can actually spawn one in here. And get them in place and locked in. Now I've got myself a name tag and a sword. I can see that there's a couple of zombies that are in here that have spawned, which is great. Let's see, there's three of them. Hopefully one of them at least will be able to pick up this sword. Hopefully not the baby zombie. Let's get rid of him because we definitely don't want him here. Right, I've got a zombie now who can pick up the sword. Let's take out the other dude. There we go, perfect. Now I've just got to get him to chase me and get him to fall into this hole. Absolutely perfect. So this guy's not gonna despawn, but I've named him anyway, and he is gonna be called Ray Juicer because he's gonna be reducing the price of all of my trades. Now he's completely sealed in there and gonna be happy for the rest of his life. All of the villagers will drop down here onto some rails so they won't take any damage, and he'll give them a couple of swipes just like that to turn them into zombie villagers. So the next thing for me to do is actually head out to the village because I'm probably going to have to lay some rails all the way from that village over there. These guys have finally taken some beds in the villager breeder. So I can now get rid of all of this dirt and that should be ready to go. Now just to make sure they're fed and have a healthy diet. Yes, we now have our first baby. So I know that this is all working. Based on that fact, I can clear up all of this rubbish that's going all the way back to the village. Whilst those villagers have been growing up, I have been doing all of the decorating. So you come into this grand entranceway and you've got this absolutely awesome chandelier over this table where all of the clerics would meet up. So we're going to have four on each side to start with and see how I get on. I could maybe add another layer above them if I wanted. And we've got this lovely, lovely pattern going on in the wall here. So I'm really, really pleased with that just adds a whole focal point to things. So if we head up, these guys, loads and loads of them have been breeding away and yeah, growing up. So I've got lots of villagers now. The main event is down this way. So what I will do, if we look down there, you can see our Zomberg. And what I will do is click on this. Hopefully we'll get an adult rather than a child. We have indeed. And through here is where it all happens. So there's various different buttons and levers. I've color coded this and this is my semi-automatic zombie converter. So first thing they do is they drop down through the ceiling in front of Ray and he turns them into a zombie villager. They then come across over here and get dropped down in front of the player who can then throw a splash potion of weakness and give them a golden apple. I've done some crafting as well. Once they convert back, you can also pop down a point of interest here and they will pick up that trade to see how many more cycles you need in order to actually get them to the one emerald trades that you're looking for. Then they will come round and at this point, again, this is all connected up through redstone with the lever. You can either cycle them back in front of Ray or you can send them on to where they're, wherever they're going to go. So first thing we do is we push this button 
The zombie then comes down here in front of us. Get our splash potion, throw it at him, get our apple, convert him like so. And once we've done that, we can put our point of interest there as well. A few moments later. And now the guy has converted. He has picked up this point of interest straight away. Now, if this was a librarian, you could just switch this out until you got the trade that you wanted. But with this guy, you can see he's already come down in price for the rotten flesh trade, but it's not low enough. Uh, I am going to lock it in by buying a little bit of redstone. But then because we've clicked this and it's up to cycle around, we simply press this button and he goes off around again. And as you'll see, he comes through, drops down in front of the zombie again, and he is ready to go. Once that's done, just bring it back through. And yeah, you can cycle this through as many times as you want. Two hours later. This guy is now down to the one rotten flesh trade. Let's grab some rotten flesh and uh, maximize our rotten flesh returns. Absolutely brilliant. Can't believe that just got 16 emeralds just for some rotten flesh. So this guy now is ready to go. The thing that I will need to do is flick this lever down, which will then change the rail. This will send him off round. And if I come through here, you'll see him pop out of this gap and then come up drop down into his forever home now to just do that seven more times and now they're all in place and yep i think that eight is definitely going to be enough for now i've been doing some trading with these guys and got myself plenty of redstone which was the main reason for getting this but now i have a couple of things that i need to do the first of which is start setting the scene for the next of the base expansions. So heading along here, I am going to be expanding over this way, which means that it's time to go into digging mode again, because a lot of this cliff needs to be moved. So off we go. And the next stage of terraforming is now done, ready for me to start building. However, before I build, there's a couple of things I need to do. First of all, I've now got this floating beacon, which can't be done. So I think I'm going to move it somewhere over here, maybe. And I also need to create my next farm. And that is for these builds, I'm going to need some frog lights. So I'm going to take the tadpoles that I created before and start thinking about where I can turn these guys into frogs. I've come across the water to the grove that I used to get the first spruce trees that I had. So I've set up this little pool here that I'm going to use to age up all of the tadpoles. And then we've got another portal here that if we just head through, comes out into this little box ready to capture everything. Through these gates across there, you'll see I've set up some posts that I'm going to connect the three different types of frog to once I've got them. And I've created another little one of these over there, which is connected to the village. You can see that I've got this one set up here, which is on a beach, which is a temperate zone. And this one is set up actually in a savannah, which is a warm zone. So that'll give me the other two types. Now I just have to go into each of these and grow up the tadpoles to be the frogs using some of the slimes that I'm getting from my slime farm. And now all of the cold frogs have grown up and there should be 10 of these, which is what I'm planning to put on from each of the different types into the frog light farm. And here they are all captured nicely in here. So the next stage will be to take them across to the main part and secure them. Look at them all running. Aren't they cute? And there we have it. All of them are now connected up to this post. I just have to head back to the village to collect the other ones. Excellent. One more type of frog to go. And there we have it. 30 incredibly jumpy but beautifully multicolored frogs ready to go into the farm and that is going to be the next thing collecting the resources for the farm and finding an appropriate place in the basalt delta wherever that might be for the farm to be set up so just a short distance from the two portals for the steampunk area i have found this lovely big basalt delta this is going to be perfect for me to probably build the farm centered around here and it won't interfere with the afk platform from this so the two spheres should not overlap too much but yeah and won't have far to travel at all to get myself some of the frog lights And the farm is now complete 
and it's working perfectly. I did have to clear a bit of a clash between the Vanilla Tweaks more mob head pack because that changed the loot table and meant that the frogs weren't actually dropping any frog lights. But I updated to the latest version and that's now done. As you can see, the golems will lure in all of the magmas and those will drop down, get broken up by this powdered snow here and then get eaten up by the frogs. This is a design by Radical Elder. I will pop a link in the description. Really, really simple design. Didn't take that long to build at all. But just from about an hour of AFKing, it has produced so, so many frog lights. All of these chests are just starting to fill up. And this has probably given me more lights than I'll need for the next build in the steampunk area. And the first of those is going to be in this pit here. And I'm going to be using the frog lights in the bottom and then creating a big infinity pool just in here with some quartz on the side. And if we go like this, it's now complete. And I really like the effect that this gives with the glass. I've also added the edge of the next part of the canal that's going through here. In a future episode, I'm going to add in a bridge going up there as well to connect these two different sections. But now I need to go underground a bit to actually find some more resources because I'm running low on certain things, namely on amethyst. So I need to try and find myself some geodes. So I started digging, but what I found next surprised me. Excellent. Ahead of me, I found the telltale signs of a geode. So I'm under the steampunk area, just underneath the water. And yeah, I need to get some of the polished basalt, but more so I need this, the calcite, because I've been using quite a bit of this calcite whilst I've been doing my builds. And then I'm going to be very careful that I don't accidentally destroy any of the main geodey bits. And as we come in here, we've got a geode that this, because it's in the area, has obviously been flourishing with all of these crystals growing for some time. And wait a second, what is this? What on earth is going on here? There's quite a few of these as well. Let, let, wait a second. Let's just see what we've got going on. An amethystine? What on earth is an amethystine? Um, I'm a little bit confused, but I'm going to go and take this back to the base because there's a few of these. This is all enclosed in here. What is going on? Let's take another one back. I've never seen these before and I'm very confused as to whether they've just added these through an update or whether this is something to do with the fact that we're actually under the steampunk area itself. And I'm back at the base now, and I've been thinking about it. I think I'm going to monitor one of these. Now, I've used a clay block because that's what it was on in the actual geode itself. And clay blocks are new as part of 1.19. So maybe this is just something that's got a very low percentage chance of spawning in a geode. It is a very, very pretty flat flower. I've thing whatever it is um but yeah i'm gonna leave it here in this infinity pool just because that it looks nice in fact if nothing else um but i'm not entirely happy with it just being out in the open here so i am going to encase this in glass so i'm going to build a big bell jar over the top of this Ah, that's much better. And with that done, I feel much safer here in the copper aging facility. And this is the next job to decorate this. So I built all of this last time, but this needs a facelift. This needs to be brought up to the same level as the rest of the builds. And the frog lights are one of the main components that I'm going to be using for this. So now to collect some resources and get building. 2000 years later. And the first stage of the decoration for this is now done, which is basically the floors, walls and ceiling. And I'm not going to lie, that took me a lot longer than I thought it would. And I completely underestimated how huge this space actually is and had to go back to the uh, storage area so, so many times just to get things like more wood because um, there's just yeah loads and loads of spruce and oak in this. And also it took quite a long time just switching out some of the things like the obsidian because I really didn't want the obsidian there on show. It's an ugly, ugly block um, uh, and switching that out for barrels in various different places 
also took quite some time. But now I've got the final stage of this, which is going to be the decoration. So I'm going to get that done and then show you what it all looks like. And as you'll see, if we come through here, this is now complete. We've got egg power going on here. We've got machines on the walls. We've got conveyor belts all feeding through into the main event which is on this wall here showing the copper aging through to the button which gets the whole thing going here so if we press give this a press you'll see the machine goes on it pops up all of the copper and if we try and avoid the flying machines and head across this side as well we've got a whole bunch more machinery going on around here with loads and loads of cogs loads and loads of gears and wheels and uh, yeah, really, really pleased with the end result of this. It still all works functionally as I've been aging up some copper whilst this has been going on. And now we've got this big block of copper, which is ready to be taken down. With that collected and another lot of copper aging away, we are going to head back out to the base and we need to extend the paved area and the road across onto the final bit of the build before we actually start on the build itself. Um, uh, yeah, so something looks like it's been happening to our amethystine. Okay, it's got a little bit bigger and it's changed somewhat. It seems to be budding somewhat. Um, to be honest, it's a good job I built this bell jar. But I, I need to keep on topic. I need to keep going and not worry too much about what's going to be happening behind me more about focusing on getting this road and this paved area all sorted and moving that up to the cliff ready to do the next build which is going to be a funicular railway so first of all the paving and then on to the build itself And with a little bit of extra decoration, the build is now complete. And I'm super pleased with how this one's come out. Obviously, we've got the two stations here for the funicular railway and the railway train going up and down the cliff because I did need a way to get from the top to the bottom here through some form of transportation and infrastructure. I've also done a lot of work to try and integrate this into the Mesa, whereas I've kind of paved over a lot of the other areas so far because it's a dockland area. I want to, for some of the future builds, integrate some more of these fantastic Mesa colours into the builds themselves. I've done that by using these fantastic slime tubes coming out of this big slime container up at the top. So really happy with how that's turned out. And if we go into the build itself, we can see a couple more extra details. And here we've got this fantastic steampunky car based a little bit around the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, Nemo's car, the double wheels at the front. I really like how that looked, but yeah, I'll probably use that design again in other areas of the town. If we head into this downstairs station, first thing you'll notice is an area to take payment for people to go up and down the cliff. There's some more steampunk machinery with pipes all over the place first place where you've actually got a toilet so you've got some conveniences as well and as you'll notice by this floating ender pearl if I click this button we suddenly appear up at the top and we are here in the top station so what I've created is an ender porter that transfers us from the top to the bottom and back again with the redstone going through this cliff every time I need to make sure that I remember to put another ender pearl in here ready to go back again I've done some other things as well like I've integrated in the area down here as well so this goes right the way through the cliff now and you can actually come out at the top by the temple and then round here over at the diagonal building. So this area is getting really big now and I'm really pleased with how it's going. The amethystine hasn't changed as well, which is always good. So hopefully that bodes well for the next episode. But I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please do hit that like button, hit that comment button and leave me a comment and subscribe above all else. So I will see you all next time, hopefully with no nasty surprises on AD Craft. So here we are in the world as it is now, and it's been an amazing journey so far, but it's not over yet. I'd like to thank you all for watching and look out for episode nine coming soon to continue the adventure.